Hives there on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant. He's with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sentences. He's like just that. using the well, traditional you point, English language. But you put me off. You pointed to yourself, and I just said Steve Merchant. Well, you know what we know? We do that every week. You introduce me. Yeah. You say with me, and I go Steve Merchant. No. Yeah. So like, it's a catchphrase, and everyone's waiting to hear it. <laughs> no, but usually I go Ricky Gervais, and, that, and you go with Steve Merchant. But this time you pointed to you, so I said it. But I didn't say it. I, it caught me off guard, so I didn't <laughs> use the sentence. Oh, I don't like the way you sit. Right? I've read medically that if you're slouching like that, can you try and describe how you're sat? And but you've got the kind of mic. Have you never seen that picture of when John Lennon was off his head on smack recording Let It Be, and he was lying on the floor at Abbey Road? <laughs> That's basically <laughs> what Ricky is getting to explain. I was scared. It's not good for you that. Look at the. You're, you're not, you're, you can't breathe properly in the diaphragm, no. so you're going to get speak badly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, listen, I was trying oh. to speak medical stuff there. I was yeah, trying to run yeah. into trouble. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Rick, 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 what? what are the words to wham rap? <laughs> yeah, what are the words to hey, I don't sucker, remember wham rap. What the hell's got into you? Uh, hey, sucker. Now there's nothing you can do. Brilliant. I look forward to, um,. A forthcoming revival of your music career. Yeah. Rick, I had some devastating news last night. Go on. You know when I left you, I was off to buy a PlayStation 2. Yeah. I just, I was totally in the mood for or a Or a PS2, as he said. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which confused him, Grandad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, you know, I, I think I went yeah. in, like, uh, some electrical stop on, uh, Oxford Street. Yeah. And, uh... So the thing I just say, the thing about Steve is, is, I wouldn't say he's mean, but he hates that. Um, he's careful, right? And he will, he will spend days... To get a pound off. Rick, Go two on. and a half hours I walked around last no. night. I swear to God, I was walking to different shops, right? I went from Oxford Street to Piccadilly Circus back again, along the length of Oxford Street back again, all over the place, right? I realised I basically couldn't get a better deal than about 240 quid, right? right. For a, a console and a game. Right. So I ended up in Virgin Megastore, I bought a uh, Auto Grand Theft 3 or whatever, right. and a PlayStation and a memory card or whatever. So I shoot off and I'm walking off and I'm going to the tube and I walk all the way to HMV um, <clears throat> on uh, opposite Bond Street sure. and I just popped in there because I'd forgotten to get something and I went downstairs and I was walking past the uh, Playstations and it went, if you buy a Playstation 2, you can get Grand Theft Auto 3 with £20 off. Oh. I was absolutely devastated. What did you do? I just, I, 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 I crumbled. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking of taking it back to Virgin Megastore going, it's faulty. Uh, well, I oh, can no. before, you haven't even got it home yet. Oh, I can tell. No, I didn't mean to buy this though. What did you <laughs> buy? Keyboard. <laughs> exactly. So the problem is when I get it back and I wire it up and that, all I can see is the cars are racing around the track. All I'm thinking is, it's like one of those cartoons when a really hungry bloke could just see his mate as like a big chicken. <laughs> and all I could see on the TV was just a big 20, 20 pound. pound note just floating. <laughs> It was an absolute oh night. I'm just devastated by it. 20 quid, I could have bought, like, another cheap game for that. We went to the, did I tell you this? Rick, we went to, we went would you give me 20 pounds and then I'll shut up about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went to the casino once, a group of us, and I lost about 100 quid, and, uh, it was, it was a, you know, great, it was, it was someone's birthday, uh, I think it was Jane's birthday, and Steve, after three hours of gambling, I'd lost the 20 pounds he got out to play with, right? I was going, you're really gutted, aren't you? He just went, Do you, have you any idea how much cheese I could get for 20 pounds? Yeah. Cold was, meats. Yeah. For cold. 20 pounds, and there it is again last night. <laughs> 20 pounds, I'm robbed of 20 pounds. Literally, they've taken it from my hand. Yeah. The HMV people. I they've can't taken it. that and they've. I'm gonna try and away. think of some things to cheer you up. Should we play some songs? <laughs> Avalanche is there. Frontier Psychiatrist. I never enjoy any record where I think I or a four year old could have made it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like it's cheating. It's musical um, cheating. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. I won't play that again then. Alright? <laughs> okay. That's done. Yeah. Alright. Nice. Shake on it. Yeah. Lovely. XFM 104.9. Oh, kiss on it. Kiss on it. Touch oh. on it. Carl came in this morning and he said he was soaking wet because obviously it's miserable out. And actually, if you're thinking of leaving the house today and thus missing the show, do not leave because it's miserable out. It's, it's like a weather time. report as well. We play music, we've got chat, we have little jokes, don't we? But Carl came and it's he, raining. He said he was soaking wet. Yeah. I said to him, I said, Rick would want you to do it. I want yeah. you to do it. Yeah. Just take your clothes off. Pop yeah. them over there. But do you know what? And he wouldn't. And he said I was going to do it, but I knew you'd say that. But. When you left us in the kitchen when he was making coffee, he went, yeah, Steve said, if you're wet, take your trousers off. And I thought, hold on, Ricky's not here, what's he up to? <laughs> little yeah. thoughts. No, yeah. I was talking on behalf of Rick, I phoned him up, I said, he he's wet, what shall I suggest? Well, I said, well, I, I was in his ear, I was, he had earpiece and I was going, tell him it's bad for him. Yeah. And I could even go, it's bad for you, you go, well, no, I'm not. Go, tell him it's, it could... Rheumatism. Yeah. It could lead to rheumatism, drop, take him off. <laughs> 
<laughs> Carl, Carl, speak. No one's heard your voice today. Come on, Carl. Come he on, doesn't want to. No, I know he doesn't. We're not. We won't talk to you much. Right. But go on. It's just nice to say hello to you. Yeah. Right. People, right. I think people quite like. They tune in to know you're here. You. Yeah. We've had some fan mail. I like his little face, his little Moby. I drew a picture of him in the week, just doodling, and he got really insulted. Did he? Why did you get insulted? Because it wasn't very good. I looked like Ian Canfield, or like. <laughs> oh, what's an insult? Yeah. The ladies love Canfield. Yeah. I mean, they're weird, kind of heavy metal ladies. Yeah, but yeah. The, the ones that drink blood. Yeah. Yeah, they love Canfield. I thought of you look like today, but I think you might find it insulting as well. It's just what? meant to be affectionate. You look, for people who don't know what you look like, you look like Beaker at the Muppets. <laughs> I, I can't see how that would be an insult. <laughs> Ah! Oh God! We don't know you put it like that. It is, but it's sort of like I like Beaker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but you like him because he's a fool. <laughs> he just goes. Mm. What does he do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you look a bit like that doctor that used to accompany him everywhere. That professor. Oh yeah, the little he's fat little bloke. One, no. Yeah, that's not. Nice. Carl, yeah. what was it that you told me as well when you came in? Just, just Carl's thought for the day. Okay. Carl, what did you tell me when you came in? Because it was miserable out, and you, and you so made it. It is a grim day in London. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. I was, I was thinking, um, oh. could you imagine dying today? <laughs> Go on, can you explain more though? Just because when you're dying, yeah. you're always like in your bedroom, in your bed, and your, always. And your family's next door. Always, yeah. And, um, I just thought, can you imagine lying there, looking out your window, because they do that as well, they sort of have the curtains <laughs> open to get a bit of light on your face. And I just thought... What a day. If this was like your last day, could you imagine? But then go on, you made another- No, 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 you made another more, more, even more profound point. You said if, instead of dying on a rainy day, you'd prefer to- No, if you died on a, on a bit of a, a nicer sunny day, then it's not so bad. What <laughs> is that? No, it's your last day looking out on the world. Yeah. And it, look at it. Don't you agree? Yeah. I, oh, I thought that was a beautiful point. It was poetic, almost. It was, wasn't it? Because no, no, the point was that, that what, what upset me was that you said you'd been thinking about that today on the way in, and it upset you. But uh, my point was that there's, if you think about the people that are dying any day, it'll upset you. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah, but you don't think about it when when it's sunny because you think, well, they'll be all right today. They won't be that annoyed. But You're absolutely annoyed. Annoyed. Oh, I'm ripped. No. Oh, I'm dying today. It was just just when I got up and opened the curtains and I thought, look at it. I'm yeah. glad I'm not dying today. Mm. Yeah. Carl, play a song. You're yeah, interesting. Mole Historical Society, watching Xanadu on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. See, it doesn't work if you say with me, Steve no, Merchant. It doesn't work. I've got to say either, I've either got to say with me, or you just go with Steve Merchant. Sure, sure, sure. See what I mean? Okay. It's not as easy, is no, it? No, it's not. No. It's not as easy as it seems. You know this, right? I mean. <laughs> what? <laughs> the radio show. Oh, yeah. yeah. We do, right? Well, we just come in and we don't plan them, we just sort of like chat. Yeah. And it, it, they still pay us, it seems yeah. good, Should so we just do this all day? What, all day on XFM or? Or, or just get a, like, get a license where it is just, it's Ricky and Steve FM. <laughs> and we just chat and we go, what are you doing there, Steve? Just having breakfast. You go, oh, right, yeah. 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 Well, oh, what are you doing there, Steve? I'll just clean the windows, isn't it? And we have a little chat and we go, oh, I'll just read in the paper. And it, we just talk and we play records. For 24 hours a day? Yeah. I mean, have you spotted any flaws in that plan or? It would be boring after about an hour and a half. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. I mean, this is boring now. No, and it's we've only done twenty minutes. No, but it's just we, we were talking about a car having a thought. Remember? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I had that thought when I went. I went out to get some orange juice, and I had that thought. So maybe this show can be about let's let's have thoughts. Okay. <laughs> so we have thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or they could, if we haven't got any, they could phone in with some. Okay. Or email a thought. Maybe if you've got a thought. Just email <laughs> yeah. that in. Just thought we could talk about it. Richard at xfm.co.uk. It could be a thought about anything. Hey, can we go on? Don't, can we not make those thoughts racist or homophobic though, please? Yeah. Or, um, not downers. No, nothing that's gonna bring us down, you know? Yeah. Upbeat stuff. Yeah. Go on, Carl. You do, you, gonna... do you know when you said 24 hours then? Yeah. Do you know how much it takes <laughs> to run one of the escalators on the underground? For 20 hours a day, how much it costs a year to do that? To run it how long? 20 hours a day? Yeah, that's what it runs the, the Is this another of your, your facts? Mm -hmm. These are always, these are always substantiated by an independent source, aren't they? They're not just something you overheard on a bus. Am I, just, just to check. This I is fact. I read it. 
I read it. <laughs> okay. Did you I'll read it on a wall in so, a so, sandwich so, shop? Sometimes I wish this was on telly because when Steve said this, you have these substantiated by an independent arbitrator. Like Carl just looked at him. Yeah, like he just spoke in French. <laughs> he just looked like that. It's, it's it. Okay, so anyway, th this this information you've got from a reliable source, you read it on the back of a fag packet or something. No, I think it was in the Metro magazine in the week. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's the, what's and let's just hear it again. How much does it cost? Yeah. <laughs> there's loads of escalators in the, in the on the underground. Yes. And they run for twenty hours a day. Yes. Don't tell us how. Tell you what, Carl, that's such a fascinating fact. Don't yeah. tell us. Let's play a record, Rick. Okay. And then people can stay tuned if they want to hear this how much is it like, costs. This is like some sort of mental home radio, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? I mean, we we are. I mean, we're, we're not mentally ill. We haven't, you know, we haven't got, have had any t head trauma. Um, we're educated people. Yeah. But we come out with just rubbish. Gobbledygook. Just nonsense. It's like, I can't grasp, I don't know why he started saying, I've no, I've no idea what that thought you just was. Said, you just said 24 hours about doing radio for 24 hours, so I remember, I thought, oh, 20, 20 hours. <laughs> So, so we're now we're now examining the thought processes <laughs> that we all have oh before no. we get to it. Let's just hear a song. Okay, right. It's half past one, and that film sounds good. Ooh, that film sounds feature, good. Feature, feature. This is where I choose a song from a film that. Oh, that film sounds good. See, uh, this is um, uh, a, a, a film that me and Steve both love, and actually he saw it first and got me onto it, and so I love it, and I did. It was Rushmore. It's a great film, and from it, it features one of my favourite artists of all time, um, The Wind by Cat Stevens, and this is off the first album I ever bought from Teaser in the Firecut. This is The Wind from Rushmore. That film sounds good. <laughs> Cat Stevens, The Wind. Elegant. That's a beautiful song. The album is is a, a superb album. It's it, it's seminal. It's just has some great songs on there. I feel like playing another one, maybe a song for the lovers. Maybe do it later, yeah. yeah. Maybe I can do that, yeah. It's beautiful. I have to say, I've uh, seen the uh, the follow-up to Rushmore. If oh, you yeah. enjoy Rushmore, it's this new film, The Royal Tenenbaums, with amazing cast, Ben Stiller's in it, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Gene Hackman in his Golden Globe winning uh, performance. Oh, yeah. Same sort of thing as Rushmore, same kind of style, but a uh, lovely sort of uh, kind of family comedy. Absolute dynamite. And again, a brilliant soundtrack. Nico is on there, Nick yeah. Drake, all kinds of treats. Forthcoming in the cinemas, Rick. Are you say the follow-up, is it the it's same not a director? Sequel. It's the same director, same writer, right. some of the same cast. Bill Murray makes another appearance, Isn't same style. Haven't um, um, the Swingers lot done another one? They have, their new film's Made, with the right. same John Favreau and uh, Vince Vaughn. Again, dynamite, really good fun. Not as kind of perceptive as Swingers, but certainly as much fun. Have you seen Swingers, Carl? I think so. Is it the one where, um... They've got a line in it, they've got a catchphrase in it, haven't they? You're the money? You're money? No. You're so money. That's it, yeah, 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 I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that I said you're the money, you went no, you went you're so the money, you went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yours is from, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Jerry Maguire. No, yeah. not show me the money. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Anyway. See, that was really articulate. We had, uh, uh, we did a feature, it linked into film, uh, Steve Love Films, did a little, um, you know, uh, 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 off the cuff review, then it went into gobbledygook again. Yeah. That, <laughs> I can't even say <laughs> it. You couldn't even say the word gobbledygook. It's, yeah. Anyway, listen, you had an interesting fact you were going to give us, Carl. I don't think we can leave people waiting for this any longer. No. Right. <laughs> um, how much does it cost <laughs> to run one escalator, <laughs> that's just one, Yeah. on a London underground, it's running 20 hours a day because it shuts for four hours in the night when they're cleaning up and that. Yeah. yeah. How much does it cost to run it for a year? Twelve pounds. <laughs> Sixty thousand pounds. The trouble with these facts is I, I've got nothing to compare it against. Uh, well, well, think about like <coughs> y your yearly electric bill. <laughs> oh. Well, when you put it like that, when you can. <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? When you think they could just use stairs. Carl, play a song. <laughs> Politics on XFM 104.9. Please, people, just use the stairs. Kinder Brothers, Star Guitar. I'm going to be honest, Steve. I like the video more than the song. Agreed. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I looked around, he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y-front properly? Genius. 
It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Ed, does anyone use their wife rent properly? And by that I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a wife rent properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> yeah, I caught, I caught you. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You didn't prove I was gay. I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gay lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well. True. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone. Anyone listening who's- and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie, wouldn't they, I suppose? Yeah. I don't even use, uh, sort of, flies. No? Usually. I sort of, just, sort of, sort of pull my wife front, uh, my, sort of, tracksuit. So yeah. That's why I wear, sort of, like, elasticated waistbands yeah. all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of, like- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you gotta get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah, we, and out. Sure, sure. Often, I won't shake. No, well, no, to my detriment because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later. Oh. Isn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg and you wish I hadn't, and you're thinking, "What if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it." What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right, uh, Rick. I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Well, Everybody I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. Stop, listen to what I'm saying! I know, no, listen, let me explain. People could hear you moving the microphone. Could they? Yeah, I can hear it in my headphones. You know, it's the little pop shield that goes over the mic. Yeah. I was gonna see where the, what the, what way the mic was facing, so I just had a look. Who cares? No one's interested. Leave it. Carl, I'll tell you if there's a problem. Alright. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know how, when my parents bought this book. I assume it's from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are, generally the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of, just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or this is probably- Or crucial. up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> Carl gets <laughs> most of his facts from. Uh, the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, 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 what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's genius, a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they had baboons serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. So it might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day went, went um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's not, sorry, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, cause what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're, like I have tr tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do Carl, like working out that sort of 10% <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon <laughs> restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so tell us comment on someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on us, please don't order the banana daiquiri because it comes half eaten. They can't help their little selves. <laughs> they really can't. They're okay with like, you know, beef and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bag I go, do you work? <laughs> Can and you imagine that the baboons serving at waiting tables? It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's see, zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen you could go. <laughs> if they were uh, serving tickets to two? Uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. Okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of pelican, thing. yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. Because <laughs> yes. that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they was, did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, yeah. Just, just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Well, they're not necessarily gay, they're not they? No one actually knows if they are gay no, or not. they are. All right. Okay, well, yes. Yeah. Okay. Gilbert and George, is it? No, that's it, those artists. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're called Siegfried and Roy. But, yeah. but anyway. Who, have... but who may or may not be gay. Yeah. yeah. And if they are, so what? And if they are, so what? But yeah. if they're not, uh, and they no, don't I look... just said that so you knew, knew I was talking about, because sure. Okay, the two gay ones, those yeah, go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel um, anymore, then all. Yeah, if you shave on. a tiger's head... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. 
<laughs> Whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head- Not just his head, it's whole body. If- Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. So I thought you- I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then, yeah, if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. Skin, the skin's- Is it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, the, like way all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's- I remembered that, like, I was- Was that a drunk just showing it in the street? <laughs> <laughs> I shaved the tiger and it's still striving. Get <laughs> yeah, out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I must yeah. make a note of that thing's car. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting fact. Well, you know a polar bear? Come on. Polar bear's, um, skin is actually, um, black. And its fur is transparent, not white. And it gives the illusion. So it, uh, it gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If its skin's black, a polar bear's skin is black. And its fur is translucent. And its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we Well, it's just because the, the light. Hits it and the sun reflects on. Yeah, and it makes it look white. Yeah, so if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you embarrass yourself. Play a record. Oh, I know all about animals and stuff. Do you, Rick? <laughs> P-O-D. Bit of pod there. Alive. That's growing on me. Yeah, it's not bad. It, you know, it rocks. I mean, we've got to give it that. <laughs> I will certainly give it that, Rick. Yeah, XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so more from the, uh, facts and trivia book. Edited, as I say, by Sir Isaac Asimov, so not sure. just overheard on the tube or, yeah. uh, by a drunk. <clears throat> well, he might have overheard him on a tube by a drunk. drunk. And just put him in a book. <laughs> yes. uh, listen to the whole fact here before you make any judgments. Okay. Sauerkraut was renamed Liberty Cabbage by Americans during World War One. Sure. In their denunciation of all things German, some Americans actually kicked Datsuns. Are they little dogs? Yes. Yeah. Little German dogs, just give them a kicking. Because they were German. Or they were derived from Germany. I don't know if they got to like a small sort of French village and just said, bring out your Dachshunds. <laughs> Why, what are you going to do to them? Nothing. Give them a little bit of food or something. You're not going to kick them, are you? Got no, some milk. I've heard about you Americans. No, no, just bring out that little sausage dog. We used to say it aggressively. <laughs> you said that aggressively. Like well, no, no, bring out the little sausage dog. Okay. Well, you're not going to hurt it though. Of course I'm not. not if you hurt it now, it's like it's against the Geneva Convention. I'm everything. not going to kick it. Well, you, I didn't even bring up kicking. Uh, I didn't even mention kicking, so why have you, <laughs> why have you done that? That's... I don't know. Well, I, I, I I haven't got a Datsun. If, oh. Sacre bleu. Yeah. Sorry. That thing down my trousers is just a baguette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that, Carl? Do you remember Dynamite that? Fact, a Dynamite fact. Baguettes were invented by Napoleon so he could carry him down his leg. <laughs> uh, yeah. we just find there's one more here that I thought might, uh... I know that there's a lot of those kind of amusing laws and stuff, antiquated laws and that on the yeah. web and things, but again, it's Asimov. I'm thinking it's yeah. true. City Ordinance Number 352 in Pacific Grove, California, makes it a misdemeanor to kill or threaten a butterfly. Threaten? Yeah, you can't even threaten a butterfly. So it goes- Don't even look at it aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Butterfly comes down and goes, what are you looking at? I go, nothing. Yeah. And he goes, judge! What? Yeah. Look, looking at me with the net. I wasn't doing anything, I wasn't doing anything. I'm fishing. But what, see, the thing about that is, a lot of the kind of, you know, sort of, the wilder butterflies from the wrong side of the tracks, they're just gonna take advantage of it. They're gonna cruise around, they're gonna be playing loud music, yeah. you know, abusing old people. You're yeah. un they're untouchable. And they're gonna go, have you got a problem with that? <laughs> exactly, you're gonna And no. you're gonna go, no. No, it's fine. Go about your business. No. Butterflies there, Rick, in California, running amok. Yeah. Should repeat it. Yeah. Um, no, no, no there's another one that I think you'll be a fan of. Uh, Oh, it might take me a while to find it. Maybe we should play a track. Oh, wow, that says us nicely. That's a lovely link. <laughs> that thing about you said about playing a track. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> um, this is Song for the Lovers, and I've chosen a, a, a great track here, um, uh, by Lloyd Cole, oft forgotten, but a great singer-songwriter. And this is one of his, uh, best songs, I think. In fact, I think Sandy Shaw covered it in the mid-80s when she had a little bit of that resurgence. Um, it's, uh, Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken? And it's, uh, Song For The Lovers. Lovely tune. Enjoy. <laughs> Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken? Um, actually, uh, Lloyd Cole, with his commotions, that was, uh, that was done with, and, uh, yeah, I love it. Beautiful. Cheers.
Facts and trivia, the last one, Rick. Go on. Uh, this is a sobering lesson for us all. Go on. At the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo in 1901, yeah. President William McKinley received a line of citizens, shaking hands with each. In the line was a man with a handkerchief covering one hand. Mm. Neither of the two Secret Service men guarding the President was curious enough to take a look at what might be under the handkerchief in the hand of the man, Leon Golzgoz, an anarchist. Yeah. What he had was a loaded revolver, and when the President thrust his right hand out for the shake, Zolgozd fired twice. McKinley died a week later. So, what he did there, it was outwit the might of presumably the FBI or the yep. Secret Service by covering the gun with a handkerchief. Clever. That's brilliant. It's absolute genius. Just, just think how they had to explain that. And they go, uh, what, what, how did they get, how did you get close enough and shoot the president? And they go, uh, we didn't see the gun. Why? Covered it with a hanky, did he? Oh, we well, are not to blame then. <laughs> exactly, we, ca we can't compete with that sort of, you know, uh, didn't you think to look under the hanky? No. No, I just, probably just thought it was a hand. Of course, because right. that's where the hand would be. Did you not think he was probably holding a gun or something? Didn't do that. We didn't train. We didn't do hiding it with a hanky, did we? Oh, if he didn't do it, then it's not your fault. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But he lived, did he, for a week? The president lived with it for that's, a week, yeah. That's because they had to go to him and they're probably shuffling around his bed going, Sorry about that. Why don't you look? I had a hanky, did he? <laughs> oh, well, they're now in jail. Well, they were. Go on. Well, when we went into the jail to give him some bread and water, he had a hanky over his hand. Right, yeah. We, we thought nothing of it. Sure. And it was it a gun? Yeah. It was a gun and he got out. See? He sh Do you remember the last, remember the gun? Yeah. That's terrible, isn't it's it? It's pathetic. No one's used that method since. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Because it was effective there, but you don't hear about that now. <laughs> no. People using all kinds of elaborate methods to yeah. assassinate people, poisoning their wine. Yeah. I, I think that was Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, they put some poison into his wine. Well, they didn't, they I didn't, didn't study it in history class, that's my memory of but it. But if only they listened to Carl last week, chink the glasses. Always chink the glasses. That shows that they used to te test it, didn't they? Yeah. Pour a little bit from yours into mine, that means I'm not poisoning you. Yeah. But if you're thinking of uh, murdering someone, you know, just, a, a with, a, with a gun. Yeah, but let's pop say a hanky over it. Just think about that. Just Could pop you? a hanky over well, it. Well, I don't know. Pop it inside an oven glove <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah. wear that as you go do it with a hand. Or yeah. sooty. Or, or one of those yeah. big gladiator-style pointing <laughs> yeah. foam hands that you used to have on gladiators. Yeah, yeah. That'd be genius. Yeah. I'm just using this because I, I love the I love the brand. No gun in there, is there? No. no. Just a big finger. Check if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we won't then if you said check. <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's oh, unlucky. Do you know, do you, have I ever told you my method, Carl, my genius method of, um, assassinating someone? This is brilliant. This is the ultimate crime. Oh, is this the ice cube one? Have I told it to you before? No, but I know that. <laughs> What's that the ice one? cube one? When you, um... Shoot an ice bullet up. You get someone round. Rick, don't say it, don't reveal it, because it's my story to tell. Oh, well, there's two, out. I know two of them. <laughs> well, listen, let me tell you it and see if this is the one, right? Mm. This is genius. Mm. Right, you rent a room across the street from the person you want to kill, right? Yeah. And then when their window's open one day, right, what you do is, what you've done is you've made an arrow from ice, okay? Mm. And then what you do is you, uh, you, you train, like, to become a, a brilliant marksman with a bow and arrow. It's yeah. an old one. It is probably, but this is why it's classic. And then you shoot them with the arrow, <laughs> and it goes across the street, into their heart, kills them instantly, but what's brilliant is, the arrow, the murder weapon, it then melts, yeah. mm. dries out, there's yeah. no murder weapon. And yeah. then you can take apart the bow, another, and another one, Steve, they is to stab them, then, to stab them, then take it out and walk away. No, Same, because, no murder weapon. No, but, there's no, no, but you've got to get into the building, this is the point, you're across the street. Right. The, you know, the only thing that could get what you is if someone saw you shooting an arrow at What about an arrow on a string? Arrow on a string? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, not an arrow on a string, because that's not going to work. What if the string broke as you were trying to loop? Good loop point, good point, good no, point. Wait, I, I no, the ice arrow is the only way. The ice arrow is the only perfect method it's, of assassination. An, that was on Columbo. Was it? But the, there's another one. Do you know, like I was saying about the, uh... The murder weapon's irrelevant, Steve. What? The fact that it's a murder weapon that is irrelevant. No, because it has fingerprints on it and stuff. Yeah, but laugh, Rick. I defy you to win. There's no win fingerprints on a bullet when it goes through your head yeah, at 12,000 miles an hour. Yeah, but they can trace it to the right, the same gun, can't they? They can figure that Throw out. Throw the gun away. Oh, no, but they'll find the gun. They always find the gun. Burn I've it. Seen it. No, you can't burn a gun. Rick, my point is... Melt it. No, the point is it's fingerprints and stuff. Well, no, wipe it. 
Ricky, never wear try gloves. Kill someone. Wear gloves. They'll, they'll catch up with you. They'll always catch up Will with you. Will they? Oh, I won't then. The ice arrow is the only way. No, the ice arrow. I bet that the was the one case that Columbo didn't solve. That that was that's one of them. The other one is. Do you know I was saying the other week <sighs> about the uh, the drinks and you chink your glasses and stuff. Yeah. I weigh around that. Put the poison in the ice cube. You quickly have a swig before it's melted. Before it's and melted. Go, that's all right. I can drink that. It's not dangerous. Just say, oh, I'm gonna I'll show you some pictures or something. Let the ice cube melt, the poison goes in the drink, say, oh, knock that back. Yeah. You look thirsty. They'll have it. They'll die. Genius. That is good. Carl, you and I, man, we're like criminal masterminds. Yeah. All what right? happens when they find the poison in the body and go, well, he was at Carl's house drinking, it might have been... You'd, might have, have, been. <laughs> you'd have legged it. Oh, yeah. He'd have been off with his missus and, like, £30,000 or whatever it was. Yeah. Wouldn't mm. it? Yeah. So that's perfect as well. Is <laughs> that it? is the perfect crime, So, 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 so hold on, are all perfect crimes to do with ice? Pretty much. Hmm. Well, well, well. Roots, maneuver, witness. We were talking earlier about um, people who use Americanisms, like yeah. they've used it all their life, and it, it's uh, our pet hate, isn't it? Really, oh. like just people who say, "I was a uh, DJ," and uh, I look, uh, you know, the risk of sounding a little bit, you know, butt licky. But what's Licky. What's that? Never heard that. But don't say but. Yeah. I thought people. I, I heard someone say he was on my ass. Oh, he was on my ass. Yeah. I've never. What? <laughs> there was. I tell you what. Almost annoys me almost as much as that. There was a guy I used to know who'd pretend, and this guy was like he'd never done anything wrong in his life. He had no street cred whatsoever. And I was driving along with him once back from somewhere, and a police car just pulled out and was just following us along the road, because police cars sometimes do. Not following us, just happened to be driving in the yeah. same direction. And he went, hey, up the pigs, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like what, I was supposed to think, what, you've done some crime? Yeah. You're part of Grand Theft Auto 03, and I, we, I better be careful, because you've got some knocked out, off gear in the back. Yeah. You'll watch it, it's the bloody pigs. Or a dead, just play it cool, play it a cool. dead, a made man that you just exactly. killed in the boot. Nonsense, and it's, I just so annoyed with that, that, kind of pretending to have street cred. I know, just a, one, I remember one once, right, an American came to our school, and we were all about 13 or 14, and he was just, uh, he was like, you had to be his friend. And it was like people vying for his attention, because he was sort of this cool American bloke, right? And, uh, he was like, good, good at sports, straight, he's always, you know, it's just great. And, uh, I remember someone saying, like, tube, a toothpaste, and he, and he laughed, said, tube, tube. And I go, well, what is it? They said, it's tube, it's tube, right? And people go, no, it's tube, right? And they go, it's tube, right? And I went, I say, I say tube. <laughs> He went, and they sort of looked at me, and they just thought, you liar. <laughs> I said, no, I say, oh, let me just think, oh, tu tu no, I say tube. Oh. When you're a kid, like, any American you ever meet is the coolest thing. It yeah. doesn't matter if he's a huge, fat bloke yeah. wearing Bermuda shorts and a camera on his neck, it's cool, because they yeah. speak with an American accent. Well, that is cool. And, that's, and they say- Being a huge, fat bloke in Bermuda shorts is cool. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's you're... what you keep telling yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm growing into that look, says Rick. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian toys, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but no, so anything you know, sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, if I could say, like, when I was sort of f fourteen, if I could have said sidewalk fender, you know, yeah. I always wanted to go into a sandwich shop and just order something on rye. I want to be one. I want to be one of those eighty-year-old um, sort of Yiddish blokes. Those, you know, sort of like old vaudeville Jewish guys. Um, that, you know, they sit in diners and talk, you know, like, like, like Walter Matow talks. Right, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, I, yeah. I wanna, I wanna grow into that, a long coat, and I'll go, ish. Yeah. Or you they. Yeah, maybe I'll start. Yeah. Well, convert to Judaism initially. Yeah. Be your first port call, and then just tour the vaudevillian, you know, circuit. Yeah. In the cat skills what of the Some kind of schmuck. Yeah. Something like that. What do you, uh, Carl, are you, would you like to be American? No, not at all. Really? Got me nerves. When I was in, um... <laughs> <laughs> the the whole nation there. <laughs> when I was in Barbados at Christmas. Oh, name dropping. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's loads of them there, because that, that's... Was that when you were doing a bit of extra sort of waiting? <laughs> like you, would, you, would, you were sort of clean, Your girlfriend was cleaning rooms, wasn't went she? There, went there for Christmas, and, um... Um, there's loads of them there, because that, that's like really close to America, that's like, <laughs> uh, Blackpool is to Manchester type It's thing, exactly right? like that. Yep. So it's, it's it's exa that's the analogy a lot of Americans use. So- But I think they call it the tropical Blackpool. <laughs> <they're probably, laughs> yeah. But they were going on- That's only all the brochures, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. And serious now, but yeah, we're going serious. on about the, uh, September 11 thing. Yeah. But they call it the, um, of course, uh, this is American. Of course, um, brilliant. The uh, the nine eleven, 
The 9-11. That's what they call it. Really? Oh, that's awful. That is, it's like people who say 24-7. Yeah. I'm well, working my ass off 24-7. Well, Americans let's say yeah. that. Well, they're allowed though. Oh, Americans are. It's, yeah. It's, I'm talking about an English person who might say it. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Do that yeah. American accent again? Yeah, of course, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the 9-11. Yeah. Where, where are you from? <laughs> what, what? Uh, can we we find America <laughs> that? Yes. But that's how they sounded in Barbados. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Sure. But <laughs> Carl, you do any other impression? But Carl doesn't, I, I very much doubt that Carl likes newfangled countries like America. Yeah. He doesn't like London. No, true. So he's, he's not gonna <laughs> like... Have to America? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Went to Florida. No, they got me, again. Got on your nose? Um, yeah. <laughs> went, went for some food. Yeah. Um, and it was the last few days, I didn't take much money with me, and we were in Florida, and we were hungry. And we sure. went for some steak. <laughs> And we had our dinner and that, and it's, I think it's their equivalent to the Angus Steakhouse. Yeah. Right. And, um, sat down, had, had the steak and that's huge, big, big portions. But anyway, we didn't have much money left and we had like another two days left, so we didn't leave, we didn't have much money for a tip. Do you know how over there they expect it? Yeah, a big tip, yeah. So, um, we left what we could, and I don't know what it was, it might have only been the equivalent to 60 pence. Yeah. But he didn't have to do that much, we didn't have loads of courses because we didn't have much money, so he brought us like the main course, and I don't know, sure, a sure, couple sure, of sure, Diet sure. Cokes. And, um, Anyway, left them the, the, the 60p. Yeah. On the way out, and he comes running over. Excuse me, sir, you can have this back. Because it wasn't enough. I mean. Yeah. It's outrageous. What did you say? I said, alright then. Yeah. Like, I thought, well, I needed it. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was nice to leave them something, but obviously it wasn't enough, so it got us a couple of more. Is it good fun with you on holiday? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you enjoy yourself? <laughs> Yeah. Do people go with you on holiday? I get bored after about four days. You surprise me. <laughs> what, what, what do you expect out of a holiday, Carl? What do you, what do you, what do you go sort for? soak up some of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. You liar. What, what did you learn about Barbados <laughs> while you were there? <laughs> a lot of crabs on the beach. <laughs> Ah! I just imagined him sitting there with his knotted hanky on his head. I like that. Not bad. Bit of Gary Newman there. That's uh, Richard X and Sugar Babes. Our Freaks Electric. Is that one of those um, things where they've taken one song and they've laid it over the top of the other? Yeah. Brilliant. It's good, no. No, it's good. Right, it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. Um, uh, yeah, well, we're, we're nearly done, aren't we? We are almost finished. Uh, just a couple just a of, um, great tracks. With a few laughs. Maybe we've had a few laughs, haven't yeah. we? <laughs> exactly. I've perked up. Yeah, you have, you have. Yeah, You've no, lost it here a bit, though. You feel a bit, it sounds, it sounds like you're a bit down again. Well, it's, uh, that's just two hours work okay. in one long sure. stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon we could do a three hour show now. No, 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 no. No? No, 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 no. Skin of the teeth, sort of, just. Yeah, we yeah. barely got away with this. Really? This is beginning to fall apart now. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, but yeah, we've had a good time. Though. We've had we've had a few laughs, as I say. Um, I just think of Carl on the beach. He said he started winding the crabs up because he got bored. Mm. He started throwing sand at them. It's like a child's experiment. When you were in California, you weren't aggrav aggravating butterflies, were you? Because <laughs> oh, that's a misdemeanor. It's scary though. The weather's really freaky. Where? In uh, California. Is it? Yeah. In the day, it's dead nice. Come six o'clock, it goes black, and then nice. the rain comes down. It's freaky. Is that every single day, Carl, or was that just the week you were there? Uh, every day, I was there for about a week, it happened every day. So as far as you're concerned, that happens all, all year round. <laughs> yeah, good thing. So what you're saying is if people are booking a holiday, they should be conscious of it. <laughs> yeah. It will always happen. <laughs> California oh, tour. That's a I fact. Does. I think it does. But, but, okay. but why did you start throwing sand at crabs, by the way? Just because, um, you get bored on the beach, you sat there, you, you look around, yeah. um, and then I saw these crabs and I was watching the way they move around and yeah, what they funny, did, innit? sort of to Did it annoy you the way they moved? No, I mean, <laughs> it works for them. <laughs> <laughs> Good of you. But, uh, it was just, uh, what I was weighing up is they're yeah. quite close to the sea, so sure. I was watching the sea come They like it close to the sea, don't they? Yeah, yeah, but they don't like it too close. No. So, like, the sea was coming close to them, they'd run towards me. Yeah. So as the sea came in to, to them, I was chucking sand the other way, and it was like, ooh. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. How long did that keep you occupied for? <laughs> the last three days, was that? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen, uh, I don't know if I've described this before, do you remember a classic Paul Daniels episode where, uh, Paul is having tea with some baboons, I think? 
Jim's yeah. full circle. And, um, yeah. he's got a little box, and inside the box is a mirror. And he gives it to the chimp, and it looks in the box, and it's confused by its own reflection. It can't figure it out. So it's looking behind the box, trying to figure out, is there another monkey behind it? Right. Yeah. It goes all like that. It's dazed and confused. It was there for for weeks, just staring into it. I imagine you're a bit like that. <laughs> <in the beach laughs> yeah, that's great. I think that's my analogy. I, <laughs> Poor yeah. Daniel's chimps. <laughs> yeah. I kept a crab once for a week. When we went to Bogner, um, it was me and my mum and my nan. In an oh, up party time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love you. Look, you I haven't, the, you the, haven't the lived. Never you haven't lived until you've woken up to the sound at three o'clock in the morning of your nan um, having a wee in a tin bucket and echoing round a caravan. Man, alive. Yeah, I was about nine. <laughs> You'd brought a chick back. <laughs> <laughs> I was about nine, right? And I just kept a crab in a first day. In handled, the bucket. In a. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Uh, no, I found it on the beach and I brought it back and I kept it in a little bowl in the sink. And then the last day, it started to smell a bit. And then the last day, my mum said, go and put it back. And I went and put it back. <laughs> so I had a pet crab for a week. And did it, did it die? What happened to no, it? No, no, it, it just got bored. Sure. It says it didn't do a lot. Did it the... start throwing sand at you? <laughs> 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 oh. Oh, Listen, God. I think we better play some more shit because we've got yeah. a few so songs to squeeze in. Uh, I just wanted to play a track. Um, I was watching MTV the other day and sure. I was a bit confused. Yes, yeah, so was I. I like that. Because um, I saw a video for the Electric Soft Parade's Silent to the Dark, yeah. but it was called Silent to the Dark 2, but it was the same song. It sounds like they've redone it. The video is different to the old video. I was very confused. Hopefully someone will phone in and solve it for me. Anyway, this is the original Silent to the Dark. Still a good track. Let's hear it, Carl. Silent to the Dark, the debut single by the Electric Soft Parade. I like that. Yeah. Very good. Very good choice there. Apparently discovered by XFM, is that right, Carl? Yeah, sent a tape into Claire Sturgis. You see? Big time now. What did she do with it? And sold <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah. Got a little five pound starter bag of skag. Exactly. Oh, and the rest it. is history. Well, w I've enjoyed myself. I have. But can I just say, we don't just like, you know, muck around and do stupid things and play great music. <laughs> We're also informative and we I'm going to leave London with this tip that Carl, for no reason, just told me. Um, do you want to do it, Carl, or shall I tell him what you just said? Rick, we haven't got much time, you better explain yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you got, he said, you've been on the Millennium Wheel, I went, no, he went, well, if you do, here's a tip. Go when there's lots of disabled people on there. And I, I was up for it, I went, why? He went, you get more for your money, because they have to keep stopping and letting them off. You get an extra six minutes. <laughs> oh, Alright? Good, solid advice if you're telling so you to go there today or tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. Song for the ladies, Rick. I'll leave you with Lamb Chop. A lot of people aren't a fan of Lamb Chop for some reason. They don't like the way he sings, but this is a beautiful song. That's the reason. Up with people. See ya. Bye. White Stripes. Fell in love with a girl. XFM 104.9. Five past one. Of a Saturday. That's what DJs say. Of a Saturday, yeah. Yeah, of yeah. a Saturday. <laughs> fast approaching. Yeah, time fast approaching ten past one. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean it's fast approaching? What's it speeding up, is it? <laughs> time speeding up as it gets towards ten past two. <laughs> Shut up. Ricky Gervais, obviously. With him, Steve Merchant. Yeah, and Carl Pilkinson. Let's not forget Carl P, Carl P the K-Man. He's, pe he's growing on people, people now. Love him. People love people him. People were thinking, oh God, oh he's, he's too much now going, they love him. Like, same as you, I mean, they uh, they still think you talk a little bit too much, but I mean, they love Carl, <laughs> and, you know, but uh, I shouldn't say that because it, it, you know, it rock your confidence. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. No, no, I am a man of nerves. In Sorry, I'm sidetracked because I'm looking on the internet here, on the website for XFM. Yeah. Because I was, well, partly bored, but also I was looking on the other day. That's nothing I said though, was it? No, no, no. no right. No. And, uh, there were some people, uh, commenting on the show. Yeah. And one person on there, I'm trying to find it, I don't want to misquote them. But yeah. Basically, as far as I remember, they said that, uh, we knew even less about the music than the DJs that are on in the week. Right. That's, I think that is scientifically impossible. Yeah. So they've embarrassed themselves. Exactly. I think, I, I think it's impossible. You can't know less than the people that are on I don't the week. think so. It's, I, like, it's just, I it's mean, like, I, it's I, like I, trying to multiply zero. 
You yeah. just end up with zero. It doesn't yeah. make sense. I checked with Steve Taylor, the man with the knowledge. Mm. Um, he should know. But I later. pretty- I don't think that- That's really annoying. It's so annoying because I'd say this, we are passionate about the music and we do know what we're talking about. Yeah. Just because we don't read the back of the CD box- No. Like I'm they're playing the <laughs> list we're given with the, the nine CDs that are on the playlist every month. There's a piece of paper here. The guy's looking at me like he's thinking, oh no, we're having a go. You're giving away the magic <laughs> of <the> <laughs> You get pieces of paper here and they've got yeah. bits of details. So for instance, White Stripes, this is the next single off White Blood Cells, February 2002. Now, it sounds like we know about the music. We yeah. We that off a piece of paper. Exactly. Whereas, when we say about music and we're wrong, at least we- it's cause we didn't know. Exactly. See? Alright? <laughs> Don't quit us. Look at the All Stars. The old, the old. So, can I just, I don't, don't want to criticise there, but if I was listening and I'd enjoyed that track and yeah. I wanted to know what it was, I wouldn't have understood what you just said. Really? There. Could you just say that again? Low Could Fidelity All Stars. Yeah, Low Fidelity, because you went, Low Fidelity All Stars. I was doing all D, I was doing me DJ. Talk, no, it's just I? you didn't know mouth I can't be usually. bothered. No, sure. It's, uh, it takes too much. Look at that, listen to him crinchling his little. Crinchling? <laughs> crinch, you're not crinchling. You're not crinchling your jaffa cakes, are you? You wasn't going out on air. No one knew. You I bet you're one of those people in cinemas that think you're being really quiet eating a bag of crisps, aren't you? Do you go to cinemas? Mmm, I've been for a bit, actually. What Tell do you do, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl! What's an entertaining evening for you? Yeah. What would you do to occupy your time? Uh, might. <laughs> your hobbies, for instance. <laughs> might, might get a video out from prime time. Right, what, 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 would you enjoy that or would it just be a chore for you? No, no, I think. <laughs> Things like that. You really hate doing that. <laughs> that's, that's when you really switch off and you forget all your problems and stuff. Why well, you haven't got any you problems? You haven't got any problems, Carl. You, you haven't don't know that. I put on a face when I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a mask. <laughs> Are you crying inside? This Carl? is you being the happiest you can be. You're like a clown, aren't you? Oh, you think I'm like a hard, miserable man? Because there was somebody else. I don't think you're hard. The other day, <laughs> and like I said to him, I can't watch the Elephant Man because it's oh. upset. <laughs> You're the best! You don't know you're doing it, you're no, the best. Can you watch it? Um, it, well... Always, when it gets that bit where they're carrying him through the village and, and messing about with his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my, this is true, my dad watched that once. I've never watched it, my mum and my sister and that were all quite moved by it, almost oh. really serious, thinking it was a wonderful example of man's inhumanity to man and yeah, all that thing. Yeah. And my dad just went, wouldn't he make an amazing novelty rucksack? <laughs> And it, it cheapened the film for me, and, and I've never had this sort Steve of Steve was thinking, he's not that ugly. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Blind, here we go, we were laughing at Carl! Can we focus on one person at a time, Rick, please? <laughs> Let's destroy him first. Oh, God. Tell him what you said to me when that record was playing about the Jaffa Cakes. He, handed, he bought some Jaffa Cakes, which was lovely, he went across the road and he handed out the Jaffa Cakes, and then I went, oh, thanks very much. And then what did you say? I just remember learning at school. <laughs> um, I'm not, like, making fun of, of the illness, because it's not funny. But, um, the cure cancer. Jaffa cakes cure a cancer. Not not like fully. Right. <laughs> they just go some way to help him. Yeah. Do you know, um it'll, it'll sort of help. If if you've got it, you can't say, right, get me a load of Jaffa cakes. Right. But I think it sort of puts a bit of a stop to it if you haven't got it. Do you know what I mean? It's like having vitamin tablets. Is this medically proven? Should we get Dr. Fox down here to confirm that? <laughs> I, can't, I can't I actually can't cope. You are just play a record. Play a record. Can I just if anyone has ever survived cancer thanks to Jaffa Cakes, please call him. No, but I didn't say he that. He said and then he went, it's the orange thing in it. And then he read he tried to read it. He said, I wonder if it's and he tried to read out this scientific name. That's my favourite one I've ever done. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah really, really good. good. Mm. Yeah. Because I was had a problem with Gomez before because it always sounded like they were trying to sound like these world weary Tom Waits style gravelly voice. And they were twenty. And they were like fourteen, yeah. Yeah, but I mean that that's great. That's really good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well done. Well done, boys. Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gives you that. He gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Can I play an Elvis Costello track? You know, I'd love to bloody hear some Elvis Costello. Can you say on that? Well, you know why? Because we met him and he's a lovely man. We did meet him, yeah. And, uh, I just, wish him to show off. I remembered all the great songs he's ever done. I didn't like his spoken word much too, you know, too mm, much. Mm. And, uh, some of his later projects I thought were a little bit. But his own songs, 
from, you know, 1978 to about 1980, I thought, well, great. Well, why did we meet him? I can't just remember why we met him, Rick. Oh. Can't I, just I wasn't- remember. well, I wasn't doing that. No, I, I can't remember. We won an award. Was it because we won another bloody award? <laughs> Oh, stop giving us awards, please! Oh, God! Oh, oh I've got enough dear. room in my house! Oh, dear, we've only got two. Yeah, we just And we haven't got one of those. The one was the BBC, so he's got a lot of room in his house. And I've got the other one, he let me have it, so he's got no award in his house at all. Can I, um. <laughs> you can borrow it? Can I. I don't know if you, I don't know who you're talking to, someone. I spoke to Richard Wilson from, uh, One Foot in the Grave. I, I spoke to him. Yeah, but he's a lovely bloke. He's a nice guy, but he said to me, uh, he said, uh, could you, could, could I, uh, do a cameo in the office for £40,000? <laughs> and I went, could, like, Ricky do, like, an amusing pratfall or something? And then you just come in as a cleaner and go, I don't believe it. And he looks at me like, like, why have you said that? Why have oh, you brought no. that? It was, I felt so guilty. Oh no! I, was, I, so, I so wanted to apologise. Why is it so? We know it's wrong. To I do don't that. know why I said it. I we don't we know. know why do, I said do, it. We, do we think? No, it's different for me. Exactly. I'm we're a, in the business. I, I do a new twist on. Yeah. I don't believe it, and you go. You know, that's the best. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> it. Twist I I've heard. ever heard. I don't know what I was oh. thinking. Why did you- I was Oh, you so didn't tell me that. I know. I felt ashamed. I felt really oh, ashamed. Oh no! I was a little bit drunk. I wasn't thinking straight. Oh, it was so no. embarrassing. I was talking to a friend of mine who said, uh, who was it? Come on, was it? He said that he was watching a new, it was, um, it was a sports cast, which it may have been, uh, um, Formula One racing or something like that. And he was watching, there was a commentator, and he's, you know, the commentators have got to keep talking all the time. Yeah. And he was going, there's, and there's, 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 there's the, uh, team there. Oh, we're good to see so and so's girlfriend in the audience. And uh, he said he saw, and it cut to Richard Wilson in the audience, and he went, and the bloke went, and there's one foot in the grave. <laughs> I knew he had to say it then, but he couldn't oh. just name all the characters. Oh, that's fantastic! And there's one foot in the <laughs> Oh, dear. That'd be brilliant. And there's The Office. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what you're you're putting us alongside one foot in the grave thing that's been going like ten years and one of those. What you're you're putting us alongside it beat us, Steve. Get over it. It beat <laughs> us in the comedy awards. No, I was just saying that you're an identifiable face if you're at a Formula One event. You okay. know, old. <laughs> Grumpy. One foot in the grave. Yeah, one foot in the grave, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, any thoughts before we move on? On anything we've said so far? Elvis Costello. Well, I'd like to play, um, Red Shoes. Are we ready yeah, for- Not yet, I'm just saying. What? Do you what? know who his dad is? Declas McManus. No, Declas Mc- I don't know his real Declan name. Declan McManus. He was a big band leader in the 50s or something, wasn't he? No, he was in the R. Uh, White's Lemonade ad. Yeah. Oh! Was he? Oh, oh no, there's so, much, there's so much to do with that. Good, so we're catering there to the, uh, audience listening who are 50 and above. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, and I'm the target audience. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Ah, oh, whites, ah, whites lemonade. You must remember that. Never heard that. Oh, anymore. those, those chimps that drink tea. Oh. Once, right, in school, um, we had a French dictionary, and you know, um, ice cold co co coke on the back of my throat, Singing hello summertime, it's the real thing. Remember that? No. Oh, you were. We translated that into French. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of that story? Yeah. That's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. But I know it in French. Do it. But it doesn't make sense. We just literally did the word. Go on. Let the me word, word. I can't believe you it, remember it. It's tres fois, coke, sur le derrière, et mon gosh, chante, bonjour, est ce que tu as That's French. the only French you know, isn't it? <laughs> it's not even French. We just did it word for word. It doesn't make any sense. Can you say another word of French? Le, can you quote Shakespeare? De ma tante. Can you can you That's can you quote thing. anything else? Is there anything else you can quote other than that? Is there anything else you learned at school that you can remember word for word? No, nothing. Le chat est sur le mur. I don't just mean French. I mean anything. English. Maybe some a, a bit what of do poetry you that you can remember. Of course I can. Yeah. Go on. Quote a bit of poetry for me. Um, like what? Don't whatever you remember. Light through on the window breaks. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. The rise west sun and kill the envious moon. It was already six o'clock. Well, anyway. What, what do you want? really count. What? Shakespeare doesn't count? No, because that's the way everyone knows that one. Oh, going what then? What should I know? The Wind Hover by Gerald Manley Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't do that one. I caught this morning's morning Minion Kingdom of Daylight still thinking about the Falcon and his riding of the Hulk. Oh, no, no, no. We haven't done Carl yet. Wait a minute, K-Man. Anything you can remember from school that you learned that you had to maybe, uh, memorize? French. French. Not necessarily French, you could <laughs> Anything, be anything you can remember. This can be anything you remember from school, apart from the orange stuff stops cancer. Yeah. <laughs> It's not the cough that carries you off, it's the coffin <laughs> that carry you off in. <laughs> Beatles, Revolution. Mm -hmm. Was that clear? Yes it was, yes. Yeah, good. We gotta speed this up, cause we're, we know, it's funny cause our first link, when we had a go 
uh, like the the library and the the playlist. When we played the record, Carl went. You usually do it at the end when you've run out of stuff. Yes. What's so, left of yeah. So we started with what's usually our worst bit of material. So I think we've got to <clears> do, turn this show round. Right. Uh, Carl has been holding this together, to be honest. Yep. <laughs> it's Carl's beautiful naivety and uh, can I say it, Carl, in the nicest way, stupidity. <laughs> yes. That are keeping the listeners. <laughs> I, I wouldn't class it as stupid. <laughs> I'm only joking. Stuff. I'm only joking, mate. Of course you're not stupid. Everyone knows you're not stupid. You're sincere, and and that and that can sometimes be, you know, it's frowned upon in this cynical world. Would uh, you say you've learnt stuff from me in the past few weeks? Definitely, That's definitely, true. definitely, yeah. definitely. Rather like a scientist learns from a, like a injecting mice. Yeah. No, but I've learnt from you about ants and stuff. I, th I think every week. As weeks go, go on, I feel like... We're you know, learning from each other. I'm learning more now than I did when I was at school. And can I just clarify? Yeah. You, you weren't raised as an experiment and you've escaped from a laboratory. <laughs> you are, you had regular upbringing in Manchester and that. Yeah, I, I think, I didn't go to school much because me, mum and dad had a caravan. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> no need, is there? No need when you've got that sort of fun at home. Yeah. I used to just go away for weeks. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, honestly. Where's you used to go? Port Maddock. But <laughs> <laughs> and um, okay, so you didn't go to school much. No, I, d I did, but not as much as everyone else. No. Yeah. How many holidays were your parents having? Oh, what, what, what was their income that they could? No, well, my dad used to work nights, and uh, he used to travel back because to Manchester <laughs> from Wales it wasn't that far. And Manchester he used to, do, to Wales. He used to do four on and four off. So <laughs> me and my mum were like loving it. But what, what's what, what, what Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port Maddock. Just down the road from Port Merion. Where they filmed the prisoner, right? Okay, so, so that's that's cleared up for me. <laughs> yeah, what did, so what did you do then? You you were in this little two birth caravan on the back of a, a Cortina estate, right? Well, what was it? It was a car. I want the uh, what was Granada, it? Granada for Granada for Granada. What are we talking? Nineteen eighty. Yeah, eighty two, eighty three, eighty right? four, eighty five. Okay, and you in you in the car down there, da down there, <laughs> park up. Yeah. What was it? What what was Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port, Port Maddock. Maddock. I remember Ruth. It's just, oh yeah. Uh, it's just Holiday camp. Yeah. And at an arcade and a beach. I was I was loving it. Yeah. But, um, so, so of the 52 weeks of the year, let's assume, I don't know how many weeks you take off normally for holidays anyway, let's just say, I don't know, you go to school 45 weeks of the year maybe? Generally, most kids? No. Nah. Less. A bit less than that. 42. How many weeks would you say you actually spent in school? Well, how many weeks do you have off for summer? Well, we just, we'll work that out. That's about what we six need. off for summer, six about four, three for Easter, about three for Christmas. Put it this way, I'm surprised I'm not Welsh, to be honest. Right. Because I was there more than I was in Manchester. Did they not, did the school authority not come and check you no, out? No, they didn't. Didn't get Manchester, I suppose, they didn't care, did they? Not really. Yeah. They're lucky you yeah. turned up at all. What did you just turn up for the last day when you could take in your best toy? <laughs> what, did you know that when you could take in any I game? Just, just play with everyone else's. Why, why, you know, I break my stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, Ooh, well, point. this answers a lot. This does answer a lot. The fact that you spent most of your time on the beach as a kid. Teachers were no good at my school. We were right. talking about it yesterday. About so you were that. teaching them a lesson by going <laughs> off in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. And uh, did you go to university? No. No. no did no. you go to sixth form or college? No. When, when did you leave school? When I was about fifteen. Right. What? You just went on holiday and didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a job early, didn't I? Cause I Where was it? Port Maddock. Getting there. No, I was a printer. BM print, print in Trafford Park. Well, that's great. That's a little interview yeah, there. Yeah, little, little uh, ne Next, there. I'll be interviewing Steve Merchant. What are we playing next? Bit of elbow. Oh, I, oh, this is fantastic. This is elbow. Blush. Elbow, asleep in the back. I, I think that is absolutely beautiful. I think elbow are my favourite new group. We've sang their praises many times, and they never phoned to thank us. Should they? Yes. Do they? Annoying. Really? Annoying. No, they're, they're doing a good job there. I wonder if they found their lyrics. Because mm. I also wanted to write a song from, didn't I? They didn't, they didn't take me up on that either, Steve. I'm not sure I'm so keen on them, though. <laughs> Carl, can yeah. I have a Jaffa cake? Because I've just found a lump. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you Thank don't you. mean me, do you? No, no, no. no Alright, no. good. Thanks, um, Steve. Now, we mm. interviewed Carl there. We've, I think we've learnt a little bit more about Carl there. You did, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to interview Steve now, um, Carl, All because right. I used to be... You're concentrating. Mm. Don't put it all in at once. Carl, chew. Chew before you swallow. Careful. Um, all right. Um, I used to suffer with that a lot. What? Not chewing. The amount of times I nearly died as a kid. 
<laughs> what? Forgetting to chew. Choking. Sure. Mint Imperials. Mm. My, mom, my mom stopped that. <laughs> 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 Drinking them with water. <laughs> <laughs> she has to hide them. <laughs> he's coming out of his shell, isn't he? He's happy Saturdays. He's miserable all week and he's happy Saturdays, isn't he? Oh, look at him. It's like we get him weekends. Yeah, yeah. And he's just happy because we sort of spoil him, don't we? And he has jaffa exactly. cakes and everything. We let him but on the radio. He has to go live with his stepmom again, don't we? <laughs> oh, no. The ones who listen. Oh, what you say. really? Yeah. Your girlfriend does, doesn't she? I imagine she's been away for ages. I know. I imagine she just switches off after a while. But you know, you know, we, you know, we love you, don't you? you know, well, we're excited. We talk about you in the week, and we, you know, we think you're great. So don't just think we're using you as cheap a cheap comedy material. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you to think that. <laughs> right? No, I'm going to interview Steve. You know, because I used to be a chat show host. Well, I'm a chat show host. <laughs> well, well, did you see me at Ricky Gervais? <laughs> no. <laughs> I worked on it and I didn't watch it. No <laughs> one watched true, it. That's terrible. No one watched what it. What do you think, Carl? I loved it. See? Are you thinking of Parkinson? And I didn't know Ricky then, so I'm being fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna interview Steve Merchant now. Okay. Live on our XFM 104.9. We should say that more often. Yes. Cause Ricky Gervais. Because they watch you and I think they've got a hospital radio by <laughs> mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Okay, um, Steve Merchant. <laughs> Great to be here. Thank Hi. You. Now, um, uh, you're a very tall man, if yes. I might say. You're six foot seven, aren't you? Yes. Was that a bit of a problem at school? Uh, well, yeah, a few few jokes here and there. Yeah, a bit of gentle ribbon, but not yeah. too problematic. What's the weather like up there? Well, exactly. <laughs> Skinny, you're that sort of. Oh, you're lanky. Yeah. Oh dear. And uh, that, but yeah. uh, uh, what about the glasses? Well, I wear glasses, but again, that wasn't really a problem, you know. Let me call you four eyes, no, really. Let me call you four eyes, freaky lank no, thing. Let me call you freak pot. Freaky the freakish. All right, I'm gimp. not sure I'm four eyes gimp. Oh, well, I'm, not well, sure I'm just saying, they didn't do that. As an interview, I'm not sure that's the best approach. Okay, okay. And then you I left school. It. You left school. Yeah. You went to university. Mm. There, were you called freaky, no, freak eyed, four eyed git? Four eyed git. Are you sure? Never been called it. Were you called freaky, lanky, four eyed, stupid haired, um, boggle eyed, freak face? Fish face. Is your trash show coming back? <laughs> is this what you s- I never watched you, is this what you said to people like- I mean you had some big names on there, didn't you? Tony Hart. Yeah. That bloke off Ground Force. <laughs> <laughs> well the problem was they'd either heard of me or they hadn't. Either <laughs> yes, way, they either didn't wanna- It was a problem. Yeah, it was a- it was a- it was a- it was a problem. Who would you say was the biggest name you had? Uh, they're all dead now. <laughs> okay. Um, probably the youngest one, uh, survived. I think Penny Smith is still with us. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, biggest name? You had Savile. Jimmy you? Savile. You had Daniels, Paul. Yeah, Paul Daniels, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and, but which was the biggest name would you say that you had on the show from the 1970s? <laughs> Peter Purvis. Peter Purvis, of course. <laughs> he was yeah. a joy. No, yeah. but, um. So that's just. But it's not coming back though, that show. We're not. It, 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 no, not, not, not in that form. They, the Channel 4 wants to see some changes. What sort of changes? Ratings. <laughs> right. Now I'm gonna play a lovely track. Thanks, Steve Merchant. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm gonna play a love trailer by Elvis Costello. I think one of his first hits, maybe even be his first hit back, back in the 70s. Um, this is, uh, Red Shoes. <laughs> Zinger meets Spray, apparently. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of him. No. Sounds good. It's spelt Spray, though, but the car reckons it's Spray. Song 2, a cover of, uh, Blur's Song 2. Yes. You wouldn't recognise it, In would a dub you? version? No. In a, an old school reggae dub style? Nice. Lee. Big em up. Yeah. All that. Oh, we know all that. Mm. We know, we know, all the wording. Yeah. Oh, we know, we know all that, yeah. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, that was quite interesting. I quite like that. Yeah, that's not, not bad. Filled up three minutes. Before that, I was still there, Red Shoes. Lovely. What a great song. Debut, was it? Debut single? I think so. I might, I'm, I, it's the first one I remember of his, but, you we'll know. We'll probably I mean, give Elvis a call, won't we, and chat you know, about it? Yeah. He's yeah. a pal now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all the celebrity. Yes. Are you, um, what, cause I, you told me something else about your celebrity world that I thought might be of interest to the listeners. I don't know if you're happy to mention it. What? Your, uh, forthcoming TV appearance? Can't oh, yeah. Interested. Oh, yeah. What I've been it, invited. Thomas? I don't usually do these things. Yeah. But I, th I, I, I sort of quite like the show. I've watched it for a while. It's on Room 101. Have you seen this car? Do you know that show? Mm. You don't <laughs> like it? No. But, but is it still Nick Hancock as well? No. Who is it? Paul Merton. God, is he still around? I've uh, seen him for ages. He's probably going to be a great pal of mine come Tuesday. No, sir. I mean, <laughs> that, that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> no. Have you, have you got all the channels tuned in right <laughs> on your <YouTube? laughs> Paul Merton's a huge star, he's on all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, is he a heck? Yeah, he's on there, uh, have I got news for you and all the rest of it? 
Yeah. What's the rest of it? Well, anyway, look. <laughs> room 101 <laughs> is the show. Room 101. Uh, is the yeah. show where you put in the things you hate into yeah. this imaginary room. And I thought I'd do it because it's just for a laugh because, you know, they let you speak and it seems like a bit of fun. What so are you going to put in there? Oh, I did, well, I'll uh, ruin it, won't I, for all the listeners? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Switch off now if you don't want to hear what Ricky Gervais <laughs> is going to put in Room 101. I don't know, just things that irritate me. Like, I don't know, um, uh, I'm putting in noisy people, people who make unnecessary noise, for one thing. Like right. That. Right. Can I just stop you there for just one second? You know I know what you're going to say. No, 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 no. I, I, just think, oh, I was just thinking, I just wonder if there's a little case there of the pot calling the kettle black. Because <laughs> you are the most annoying man ever in the history of all things. I mean, I've met a lot of people in my life, I like to think. Even everyone. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, anyone I went to school with who was possibly, I mean, an evil man would throw things at people when, the, you know, the teachers just throw stuff at them all the way yeah. the lesson, throw things at the back of your head. Yeah. Even he was not ir as irritating as you are. Really? Just, just the fact that you're just crunching up a plastic spoon now. Whoa, as we what's talk, good is, is that? It's That's annoying. Not... Yeah, I know, but oh, it's just, you're so irritating. You're always making the little noises, <laughs> just little sounds all the time. <laughs> we, were, we were working yesterday. We were working yesterday, right? And I was typing this, and he had an elastic band between his teeth, <laughs> right? I don't know how he's got. You know, how he, he just seems to end up with an elastic band between his teeth, right? And he was flicking it, so it was making a noise, boom, 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 boom. What were you saying? You were just going, the rain on Spain <laughs> falls mainly on the plane. The the rain. Rain. In Spain, in Spain stays mainly on, on the plane. plane. Just kept doing that, right? Repair delivery. Yeah. I eventually, I don't know what you're doing. What are you up to? He went, oh, sorry. Tried to wrap the elastic band round his face, right? It flipped up, hit him in the nose. <laughs> right, he screamed, because that hurt, obviously, it came quite tight. And he said to me, he said, if I can flip this elastic band and hit your glasses, <laughs> right, not, not, not your face, but if I can hit your glasses, can I flip the elastic band at you? <laughs> I went, well, how am I going to find out if you can get you might hear my face? Uh, he went, well, why don't you cover up the skin on your face, your yeah. nose and everything, with uh, some paper. Which he did! Yeah, just to keep you happy. Yeah. And then he flicks it at me. So I grabbed it, flicks it at him. He ran off screaming, swearing at me. <laughs> well, don't fight at me! I was saying, don't be so childish. Retaliation is childish. I did it first, it's so... It's pathetic. Endlessly. Just this kind of... No, but you know, no, you agree with me on the people who just, like, I can't stand noisy eaters, people who go... No, no. Like that. No, and, I do uh, agree with that. And, and people eating crisps, as I said before, people eating crisps in cinemas. In, well, anyone who's making noise in the cinema, it's oh, no. I know. Are oh, they, they must be mental. They've gone to see a film, there's people they don't know there, everyone's paid eight quid. And they're and crunching away. Oh, leaving their phones on! There, I, there was, I was in the cinema, there was a 16-year-old girl, Took a phone call in the cinema, the, the film was running, she said, and she went, hi, yeah, I'm in the cinema. Started having a conversation on the phone. I was thinking, yeah. how important is this call yeah. that you've got to receive? Oh, yeah. it's Tokyo ringing. <laughs> it's Yakamoto's there, the deal's going through. <laughs> it's Saturday afternoon, you should be up there, hairdressers. <laughs> I just was so, I was in the cinema. Oh, by the way, Mr. Yakamoto's coming round tonight, and we can't use my pad, so, so you've got to make him a meal. Yes. Don't you and your wife muck <laughs> things up for me. But we, I was in the cinema, this is not, it's not long ago, and, um, I went to see that this is, uh, I think I was off to see that film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or whatever it's called. Do you know the-, the Well, they could be on the phone for that, because it's subtitles. So it's not gonna ruin it, is it? Yeah, it wasn't her. This was- I was sat next to another woman. She was crunching a big uh, fat woman. No, but he's got a good- he's got a good point there. Loads of people could be on the phone in there and it wouldn't n sort of <laughs> niggle you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Well, at least we've cleared that <laughs> Imagine if that was true. No, because, well, it's like when you go on the tube and read a paper, there's loads of noise, but you can still concentrate, can't you? He's got you! Do you know That's I mean? such a great point, isn't it? Right, yeah, because it's so easy to lose yourself in that Im magic realism world, you know, with all the sound effects and music and surging, exciting noise, that- and there's a woman clattering on going, yeah, well, I'll probably meet you later, Stan. Should we get some diamond white in, around by the park? Yeah. Switch off. I do it. Yeah, but we know what you're like, <laughs> Yeah, you can switch off, Carl. It's like yeah. you can turn your ears off. <laughs> That's the skill well, you it's have. not the ears, it's the, it's the behind the ears. Yeah. It's the process that between the ears and the brain that you can exactly. switch off. So we can still hear all these things like a cat. But I was in the room, there was this woman sat next to me, she was, she was a big fan, she was crunching on some popcorn. Again, that's a crime. Why are they selling popcorn in cinemas? I don't understand why she the needs noisiest- to eat regularly Why that. have the noise- why the noisiest food in a cinema? Yeah. I don't understand why that's come about. Yeah. It really mm. makes me angry. Yeah. Is that it, right? Smoothies. This we want smoothies without straws. <laughs> exactly. The trailer for that film AI, Artificial Intelligence, came on. Do you remember mm. that? And the tagline was, David is 11 years old. He weighs 60 pounds. He's four foot six inches tall. He has brown hair. His love is real, but he is not. Oh, yeah. And she just went, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> to her boyfriend. Right? Uh, just ruined uh, it. War film trailer comes on for some Pearl Harbor or something. She goes, yeah, don't fancy that. Just announcing this. Don't fancy that. Too many war films. So then the uh, trailer, th then the opening credit comes on for, um, Cracking Tiger. Uh, we know, well, before that, the, you know that thing that comes up that says it's signed by the BBFC and it has the kind of certificate and everything, and that certificate to say what age you have to be to see it. <laughs> that came up, and it says, Cracking Tiger, Hidden Dragon, in brackets, subtitles. She went, it's not subtitled, is it? <laughs> 
I thought this was the most famous foreign film for years. It won Oscars, it was a huge <laughs> film. Everyone uh, knew it was foreign. She goes, <laughs> it went, and it, so the, the, the credits begin, it says Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She went, stupid name for a film. <laughs> what, she just she won paid it? It to see it, she was with her boyfriend. So then it starts, right, and obviously it's in Japanese or Mandarin or something. She's like, yeah, okay, and they're doing the, they're all talking Japanese. Japanese or Mandarin. Yeah, whatever it is, so they're speaking in this, uh, you know, Japanese language, oriental language. And she's going, don't they sound stupid? Hot ching chong 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 chong. Don't they sound stupid? She's going, and then the subtitles come up, and it's quite a weird kind of strange language they're talking. And she's going, can't make the subtitles out either. It's both gobbledygook. Just wittering on every step I of the film. You. I totally agree with you, but what I like in your telling of it, I know you were sort of getting quite I emotional. I generally live it. But if you went Mandarin or Japanese, <laughs> some weird language, and it, <laughs> well, I don't know what it is. It's a strange language. <laughs> and it's a strange language. Well, anyway, oh dear. So then I moved. I climbed over several seats, made a big huff of, you know, make a big show of moving. Yeah. So next to a guy on the phone, just chatting on the phone. Oh, I'd have gone mental at that. I was li- I was, I, I, I told now, I hate that film, I don't, I didn't enjoy it, I don't like seeing it, I don't wanna, don't wanna even think of it. It's subtitles, isn't it? What, rubbish. rubbish. That's why I get videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I should have thought that through, Carl. You're absolutely right. Lamb Chop? Yeah, let's play Lamb Chop. This is brilliant. <laughs> this is from this CD that came out recently with the Uncut magazine. Occasionally they put out some quite uh, interesting free CDs. And this was one that had uh, various covers of Rolling Stones songs. And a lot of them were, you know, quite, quite shoddy. But this was a brilliant, uh, especially done, I think, for uh, the, uh, the CD. It's Lamb Chop doing a, a version of quite an obscure Rolling Stones song called Backstreet Girl. It's just beautiful. Let's hear it. <laughs> Andy Warhols, get off. Getting a little bit blase now. Steve's just wandered off to make the tea. He's talking to Dermot. Can he? Is he not really? Is he? Yeah. Is he just down there? Can he hear this? Nah. That's that is that is a bit shoddy, isn't it? Yeah. It's not I'm crazy. going to see um, Pop Idol tonight. Oh, yeah. 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 Who do you think will win? Um, Will or Gareth? I don't care. Do you really? No. It was in. Uh, was I boring you? Sorry. It was in, no. It was in Leicester Square, right? The little lad. Yeah. In. Uh, Big coach with his head on the side. Yeah. I mean, how long has he been around? Was it an accident? <laughs> no, but do you, do you know like those ones that footballers have? Big heads? No, they don't count really big coaches. I mean, he's only a small Big lad. coach what like? I don't know why he needs a- Trainers, you a mean? A big coach. <laughs> Look, if he's just gonna be like that, I'm not telling you. Sorry, go on. A uh, big coach. Yeah. With his head on the side, and he yeah. came in and His picture, like, his picture yeah, on the yeah, side. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And about 200 kids screaming and going mental for him. Really? I just don't think it's right. No, it's not. I mean, it's been around for what, a couple of weeks? And the way everyone keeps going on about his stuttering. What, you think they should really concentrate on worshipping worthy sort of things like S Club 7 and A1 and... Look... Who have, who have been around for a year? So you pick on so me when Steve's not well, around. It's only a joke, Steve. isn't it? Here he comes. Here he comes. He can't believe it. But it's just the way, like, they keep going on about the stuttering. Yeah. What's going on here? Well, you were, well, you were late. What are we meant to do? We need to play on a record. Oh, we can't possibly go on without Steve. Oh, we need Sting. What? Hey, <laughs> Dude, that's the reason you shouldn't do it without me. <laughs> I meant nothing. <laughs> Probably had a good reason not to let you have this cup of tea. But I will anyway. Thanks. Blue. Cheers. Thanks. Right. Um, just saying that, um, uh, Carl thinks all this nonsense about Pop Idol oh. is a little bit sort of, uh, shallow. Because uh, they've not been around long enough to be worshipped by children. What were you saying there when you were talking to me? Unlike about Santa Claus, who's been around well for forever. <laughs> yes. He, he was in Leicester Square in a big coach of his own. Who was? Gareth. He's only a small lad. He had the biggest coach I've ever seen. A coach? <laughs> yeah. One of those like National Express coaches. He just probably come down from wherever it is he lives. No, no, no. With his head on the side. What? We went through this. His own, <laughs> his own coach, not, not, not like. You mean a like a tour bus? bus? Yeah, but with his, with his head on the side. With his face so on the side. His sun. own coach. <laughs> <laughs> was he driving it? <laughs> <laughs> was he really nasty? Go, we can't have a toilet break yet. You had your chance. <laughs> yeah. Sit down. It's just Wait till we get the service. I'm finishing this fag, and then we're moving on. How come and if you're not back from the toilets, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. it's a lovely restaurant here. Um, <laughs> all right, Jeff. Well, you know the people. <laughs> yeah, well, not my brother-in-law or anything. Um, it yeah. would have been. It wouldn't have been quite as snappy as that if he'd been saying all that. No, no, no. <laughs> well, that's it. Everyone keeps talking about the stuttering, but they never go on about his asthma, and he's got really bad asthma. <laughs> They you're don't. Right. We, you're right, we should attack the asthma more as well. Do you think he's held that back for the final? Do you think he's bringing out the big guns for the final? Oh, and by the way, I've got a- a- Did you do a- asthma? Did you think the way he does that? 
When he's trying to, it's, that's, that's his not therapy. That's not asthma, Carl. That's him trying to breathe in order to help him speak. That's his, th that's his therapy. Have you it guessed was... about the asthma? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you read that read this or something. What you thought is asthma was because he goes, <sighs> that's him. He has to do that to get over the, the stuff. That's, right. that's a yeah, uh, therapist. Uh, <laughs> I got bad asthma then. What if you ever have kids? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he hasn't got asthma. When you yet. cross a road, don't bother looking both ways. Yeah. Just walk straight across. I love that. I'm in a doctor saying that. Oh, not asthma. No, he does that. Like, Has he? No, it's not <laughs> asthma then. Uh, okay, well, I'm you, We better mate. operate. Well, yeah, well, thing. don't operate. He's just, no, he just fell over. No, yeah. I heard him breathing heavily. He's yeah. probably got something lodged. I, I got a, I got a story about breathing heavily after this next record. Really good. Faramunch, got you. Although Steve thinks it's Faramunk. It makes more sense, don't you think? Monch is a bit of a rubbish word, whereas monk, brilliant. Yeah, but Let's it not is... discuss it. No, let's not get into a, you know, a big highfalutin... Yeah, exactly. ...phonetics argument. No. They can call themselves what they want. That's up to them. And good luck to them. Yep. Good guys, good guys. Now, I am going to Pop Idol tonight. Yep. This is what I started it until he said there was a, a young kid being screamed at by kids because he had his own coach with his head on the side. Yeah. Uh, you know, we did, you did sort of like... I don't know why you're going there, Rick, because you know who's going to win. It's going to no. be Gareth and there's no... Not necessarily. It is, oh, it is. No. no. Don't even fool yourself trying to drum up some excitement. Well, look, wait, you see, they've both got about the same vote and, uh, and, um, uh, Darius has got like a million and a half. Now, I don't think the Darius vote was sort of like the Gareth sort of floating voters. Because he, you know, because he's a cute kid and everything, and he sort of like looks like thing? a pop idol, and you know, but he's not as good a musician. And I think maybe when people went for Darius, they were a bit kitsch, but I think they they might. Do you want to make a wager? Oh, well, I bet Gareth will win. Exactly. You see, you may as well stay home, Rick. You just want to go to meet PJ and Duncan. <laughs> yeah, they they so they call themselves out on deck nowadays. Well, fair enough. They're my favourite. They'll always be PJ and Duncan to me, and they're, they're brilliant. brilliant. They they're are brilliant, brilliant, aren't they? They're the best it presenters. It seems to me there's no one else, like, on TV that kind of unites everyone. I don't think there's anyone really no. that can honestly say, if they're being honest, that they don't like Ant and Deck. I know. It's like, there's no one else like Phone it. Phone no if you don't like Ant and Deck. And I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to hear your arguments for it, because I yeah. think, and I'm not saying about this ironically, oh, I like a couple of kids presenters, ironically, I no. think they're genuinely good. Yeah, they're, they're good. They're yeah, likeable, they're, they're funny. Yeah. And you can see they've got a great relationship as well. They've got that sort of Morecambe and Wise, every man appeal. They're brilliant. Yeah, well, we we love Ant and Dex. Did you see in the in the week there was a the Gar no, what's his name, the fellow that um, Dominic Mohan in the Sun, he's the kind of entertainment guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he had sort of ten ten questions that should be answered about Pop Idol because he thinks you know uh, uh, they, everyone's got a vested interest in Gareth winning. Da, 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 da. And there various questions. One of which was why is it that what Gareth only seems to stutter when he's being interviewed live? It's because he's nervous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've answered that one for you, Dominic. <laughs> he was trying. You realised that he'd written a list. And he didn't really have enough to fill up ten. Although you, you were nasty about his stutter. You said it annoys you. No, I'm not arguing that, it, it, oh, the stutter annoys me. His query was he thought that he was affecting the stutter. How in order to be win annoyed the annoyed that someone's stuttering though? It really annoys me because it's, it's just embarrassing. It's cringeworthy. See, the thing is, is I know people say, oh, you, it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be an issue, right? We're talking about a pop idol. Now, no one, everyone accepts the fact that he's got to be a good looking guy to be a pop idol. We all accept that. And yeah. I'm saying I also want him to be able to speak properly to be my pop idol. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having a stutter. But that's no, I'm not true. saying there's anything wrong no, with being that, ugly. That is true. But that is true. The there's a body fascism. Yeah, there should also be a but, vocal fascism. Yeah, but there's not a trauma if you don't look mm. like a pop star. There is a trauma in society if you can't speak normally. So it's what, a much a bigger issue. His trauma? Uh, well, yeah, of course, of course it is. But, I, it, but it's not, I'm, not arg I'm not arguing about what we think. Because no, a, lot, a lot of people think that, a lot of people get abused if they're ugly. I mean, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm assuming that's well, the I, case. Well, I can't speak very well. No, I don't, well, I don't know if that's the case, but... We'd make one great pop star between no, us. I don't think so. My looks and your talky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although you sound like some sort of weird words or... I'm not trying to be a pop idol! <laughs> <laughs> Alright! People can idolise me in their own small ways. Oh, like dear. Presenter. Oh, God. Look at us three. Imagine if we tried to be like, um, BB Mac. Or light funky ones. I'm just thinking of like three good looking guys. Genesis. Did I mention about when we were in America? Did I mention that last week? The police. No. Did I mention this to you, Carl? Oh. Did I mention it last week? Yeah. When we, I was in America at a wedding. We got, went to a wedding with some friends. We were walking through America. There were five of us walking down the street in New York. And uh, a car pulls up and some uh, Chinese tourists lean out and they went to us, excuse me, are you in sync? <laughs> and we said, yes we are. <laughs> and they were taking our photo and stuff. <laughs> just think of Steve. 
at the back that are like two right. foot taller than Which the other. Which member of NSYNC is two foot taller than all the rest? <laughs> <laughs> Don't it Chinese really... people like tall people or something. Right, play record. No, no, seriously. No, no, because it's... It, it, I, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right, Carl. We're likely to get in dangerous territory. Yeah. Don't Chinese people like tall people? There's something... That, I'm sure... I'm sure... Do you know like I was saying... Hone in if you're Chinese and you like Carl, tall what, people. what worries me is that when they did Chinese lessons, <laughs> you were down the beach in Wales. In... <laughs> in, in Ruth Maddock. Paul yeah. Maddock. Paul Maddock. Oh. Do you want to play Lou Reed? Oh, this is Song for the Lovers. It's a beautiful track. It's Satellite Love. It's classic. It's gorgeous. It's Lou Reed. Rick, can I dedicate this to someone? Go on, then. He's Carl, so... you shouldn't have- you shouldn't have pressed the button. Well, it's, that's- he's doing his job. No. You shouldn't have said, can I dedicate this to someone? We've had a letter. Yeah. Sophie wants to dedicate a song to her boyfriend, Peter. They're uh, fan- firm fans of the show. Oh, Let's right. play Satellite of Love for them by yeah, Lou Reed. Beautiful, beautiful song. song for the Lovers. Don't ruin it this time, Carl. <laughs> How to ruin a song by Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Do you want to explain what you were doing? Uh, I was just, um, singing well, along well, to the backing well, vocal. Well, you're not just singing along. Doing it like a mental. Well, just, just, just give us a book. Well, I haven't got my headphones on. I've got to do it in time, haven't I, now? Because it, wait, was it? Is it finished? finished it's finished now. now. And it was just going, when Bowie, when well, Bowie goes, he goes, Satellite. I was going, ah, <laughs> Like that. Yeah. yeah. But you are, in room 101, you're going to put irritating people. <laughs> yeah, but it's so nice what I'm making. Are you going to climb down it? that little thing and climb in yourself? <laughs> it's sort of, yeah, yeah, maybe. You know they have sort of a visual representation <laughs> of the thing that irritates them. They always have that, like Shakespeare, it would be a bust of Shakespeare's head. Just a bit yeah. of you. Yeah. Really? Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> Barry in the background, satellite love, song for the lovers. I, was, I should have, I should have liked song along on air. I love the idea of you when that came out, you know, sort of 17, got a girl back to your place, you know, <laughs> just, just making out with her. Just that record's on in the background, you just go, ow! <laughs> I'm gonna have to shoot off now, right? <laughs> ow! Just hang me to it, I'm enjoying myself. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish myself off. Ow! <laughs> I'll finish Oh dear! Oh, you can't do that! Oh, oh. we've cheapened that song. Oh. You, you've ruined that song forever for me. Like. No, I haven't. But it's see the thing about Lou Reed is because Perfect Day, just yeah. a genius song. But we can never play it now, can we? Because of that BBC. Act. No, because I'll tell you what. What's her name coming in at the end? Um, M people. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that, oh, a thing she does it's with her voice. That song. There's oh. a couple of songs that have kind of like I always remember. Um, and who's that one that goes? Um, it's such a perfect day. Yeah, some who's of that? opera ponce. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's a song. Any other songs ruined because of their association with things? Um... That song, um, uh, First Time, which was on the Coke ad. First time, first love, duh. Yeah. Was, that, was, that, that was, was that, wasn't that Fallen on Blondes? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that was, that was Robin yeah. Givens, was Robin it? Givens, yeah. What was the, didn't Fallen on Blondes do something like that? No, not I just keep seeing Fallen on Blondes in the, in the playlist. I think Fallen on Blondes <laughs> just, they ruin their own career <laughs> by writing songs. <laughs> yeah. It's becoming a feature. Yeah, we should play Fallen on Blondes one week. Um, Rick, well, I was gonna say something to you before Go we got sidetracked. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about, Carl? Oh, we were oh, talking no. about, um... We nearly lost it then, but I think we pulled it back. <laughs> it's okay, no, we had a fascinating fact that we were gonna... Oh, yeah, if everyone in China, Carl... This is true, Carl. Right? Carl, wake up and listen. Listen, if everyone in China... <laughs> <laughs> it jumped. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be hard to coordinate. They did hands across America. They did up up yours, the laws, right? We can coordinate this. We can get the sun involved or something, right? Everyone, a billion, one point two billion or something, jumped up and down at the same time. Shut up! <laughs> well, you're, not, you're not cause, explaining this clearly. It would enough. cause a tidal wave that would destroy America. If every person in China jumped up at the same time, that would cause a tidal wave that would destroy America. Apparently, according to physics. According <laughs> to physics. I don't, I don't believe it. It is, no, true, true, it's a fact. I'm not, we're not making this up, we, we both know this yeah. is a fact. We're not making it up, we've heard it, but yeah. obviously I don't know, I don't know what that's based on. Someone going, just had a terrible thought, <laughs> Mr. President. What is it? No, you know the atomic bomb and all that? Yeah, forget it. Forget it. If everyone in China jumped up and down, they'd wipe us out. Right. You know what I mean? See, there should be some Chinese leader just threatening them with that. Yeah, just showing them a picture just of everyone pictures. just poised. <laughs> just, uh, just pictures of China people just crouching. On pogo sticks. <laughs> exactly. Just a, a billion or Chinese just, people. Just, just all stood on, on, on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> 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 that would be brilliant. Oh, See, dear. He's, he's dumbfounded. He's scared he's now. He's scared now, isn't he? But there's more chickens in the world than people. <laughs> 
Play record. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> what an amazing track. Incredible. You don't, no one else is playing that on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, really? No. Are they? No, I wouldn't have thought so. That's I mean that in a good way. I mean that like we're breaking new territory. Like just playing the songs from the early the has got one of the best. Oh no. I think Dr. Fox or Simon Bates said that about a track once. Really? Got, this has got to be the best intro of a rock <laughs> song ever. The fact that I was saying it about The Who and he was saying it about Money for Nothing yeah, is irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Someone made me sit in their car once, uh, with their new car stereo system, uh, so that they could play me the beginning of Money for Nothing. Oh. Just sat there and was like, yeah. Have we <laughs> got that? Crazy. You've probably got that in the library, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> is it right that Rod- Roger Daltrey in yeah, The Who, yeah, 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 that's right. His kid is in EastEnders, the like, one who plays Robbie. Something my mum told me, and I don't know if she's got it right or wrong. What, I, what, but it does look like that's him. Dean, Dean Gaffney. Gaffney. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't want to go off his dad's name and that, so <laughs> he's changed So he it. used his brilliant talent <laughs> <laughs> and his <laughs> pox face. <laughs> do, you, do you know if that's right, though? <laughs> I don't know. It but, looks like him, doesn't it? Well, I'm sure that's libelous if it's wrong. Oh, oh right, yeah, right. you'd be ashamed to have Roger Daltrey as your dad. Well, no, but Roger Daltrey might not want it getting round that he gave birth to Specky. Yeah, right, actually. That's what you mean. Specky? Spotty? Spotty, so I yeah. looked at you. Yeah. All right, calm down. Well, I do know you've got nice, clear skin. At least I didn't call you see. Spotty Goggle-Eyed Freak Boy. You've you got a nice skin, a nice complexion, smooth-faced Goggle-Eyed Freak Boy oh, fish. thank you. Yeah. Let's be nice. Carl, what? Me? Don't you like us arguing? Is it like Mum and Dad arguing? Do you get all- It's a bit like that. In the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was nowhere to escape to. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, rattling around Did you make little... any friends when you were down on the caravan site? Yeah, a lot of people from Birmingham were there. What kind of, uh, pals did you have? What were their names? Uh, the, the, I can't remember, it was years ago, but yeah. they all had rich parents. Right. Like, they had, like, their own car to drive around the campsite on and all that. Right. Yeah. So I Their own fence. Them, so I'd have a with... And, oh. uh, but they were mates and you saw them every year, did you? Or every three weeks when you went down there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you didn't keep in touch with any of them? Uh, no. I'll admit now, I went, I went to the same place in a caravan for about six years running. I went to a place called Riverside in Bognor, because mm. someone round the corner from us had a caravan, two birth caravan, me, my mum, and my nan. I think I'm really lucky to, <laughs> to have, a, to have had it, really. Because a lot of mates who I had didn't have enough money to go on holiday and they'd just get a present for the summer holiday. I would like, I would just like, I would- Of course I, they've got an education, so it's really- Yeah, but Carl, it. the thing is with Carl is, right, I want to give him gifts. Yeah. I want him to be have, a, have the loveliest Christmas ever. I want him to go pony trekking. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I want to just- Scared of horses. <laughs> <laughs> so many things we don't know about, Carl. <laughs> fell off one out of fate, and uh, the woman didn't know what to do. She couldn't handle the horse. It was running off. I was hanging underneath, getting a kick in the head. Never really? Now, hang on. What age were you? <laughs> this could explain a lot. I was about six. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> oh, I think we got oh, to the bottom of it here. Oh, no. He got <laughs> kicked in the head by a horse, uh, lived in a caravan, and had to- Live in Wales half the time. Oh. oh. Then no wonder this is your favourite time of the week. Do you look forward to this all week, these two hours? Uh, it's alright. <laughs> what would make you truly happy, Carl? Do you mind me just asking that? What would make you truly happy in life? I was thinking about it in the week and I don't know. You don't know? There's I nothing that you particularly <laughs> want that you feel like once I've got that, that... Well, you, the easy answer there is money, innit? But I don't no, know it's not I true. Don't know if it's true. No, you know, you just need, need enough money. Do you feel spiritually uh, satisfied? Yeah. Yeah? Carl, have you embraced the good word of the Lord? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, well, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We're having a meeting tomorrow. It's in the church hall, we'd like you to come along. I went to a church Rick, I've got to say this, I, I was with, I've got this, uh, this housemate who I don't know that well, and right. I've been living with him for about, uh, two, two months or something, right? Yeah. And he's in the kitchen, he's washing up, and I just turned to him, right, and he doesn't know me that well, because we, you know, we sort of talk to each other now, but we don't know, and I just turned to him, I went, Matt, have you got to know the good word of the Lord? And he went, and he looked at me with utter fear in his face, and I just went, I just think we should sit down a bit and, you know, just talk about, you know, the word of the Gospels. And, just, and he just looked at me and he was absolutely petrified. I just started laughing, cracking up. And it's the sigh of relief. He yeah. was absolutely petrified. It's a brilliant game to play if you're getting a lift on a long car journey yeah. with people you don't Maybe know where you Just bring that out. Yeah. It's so terrifying. Yeah. I went once. If you're, went. also another good one is when you pick up the hitch, I say like, I wonder what this car would look like on fire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Things yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Sometimes well, I like to drive the wrong way down the motorway. Yeah, yeah. Would you, uh, what does a knife feel like when it's going into your eye? <laughs> <laughs> what? Can't you see that story in the week with, um, with a farmer 
who got his arm stuck in a bit of machinery. And he was going on about, I mean, he came on with a false arm, so you knew something was wrong straight away. <laughs> but, um, you knew it wasn't going to end happily. But, um, but he was, uh, he, he said, I'm a farmer, I've been a farmer for years, and, um, I've, I'm always telling people don't stick your hands in machines. He said, but I got off my tractor and the machine had stopped, mm. and he went to shift some, I don't know, if it was a Coke can or something, that, that was in the field and yeah, killed yeah, the machine. Yeah, bloody cage drinking Coke. Oh, this is not the famous one, that about 15 years, and he, and he, he took his arm to yeah. the hospital. And he was making jokes, his no, arm no, was in ice. He didn't take his- no, no, no. no. What it was, it was, um, hmm. his hand went in and the machine started again. Yeah. And it started pulling it- pulling at his skin, oh. right? So, like, the skin was coming off his arm. Yeah. And it was going around the rollers, yeah. and he was pulling back like that, so he's like, oh, God. Yeah. And the skin's, like, being wrapped around, and it's, like, pulling it, so yeah. he can see his bone and stuff. Oh, no. And, um, he was there for, like, ages, going, oh, God. And he had, um, a, a pen knife in his pocket, so he got that out with the other hand, Managed to open it. I mean, that's, that's yeah, because yeah, they yeah, stick, don't they? After a while, I've got I've got one of those um, Swiss okay, Army knives. Okay. And well, that's what it was. I, 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 I can't do it with two hands sometimes. Once they get all Please. full of gunk, he managed to do that with one hand. And yeah, cut away the skin. That's oh. not true, is it? Yeah. Has he learned to farm again, like the drummer of Def Leppard? Let's learn to drum again. And they got like just like the handles. Can he like... farm now with just one arm. <laughs> <laughs> he was good because he was making a joke out of it. And that. Oh, that's I think, good. Though. I think that's good. good but um... that doesn't mean you can, Steve. Then. No, sure. He had to cut his own flesh off to escape a combine harvester. Yeah. He doesn't need you, you know, making voice cracks. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Sure. I, d I just always remember getting a hot plate out of the oven when I was younger, and that absolutely killed. Yeah. It stuck to my fingers, and I just thought the pain that he must have been going through. Yeah. Must have been what? You must have, must have been worse than a hot plate. Oh. It must yeah. have been worse than maybe dropping a pie. Yeah. Yeah, you I think you're right. <laughs> XFM. XFM. That's nearly it. That is pretty much it. XFM 104.9. Fast approaching three o'clock. It is indeed. Uh, is that pretty much it, Carl? We, is this our last link? I'd wrap it up. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so would I, actually. Uh, it's a song for the ladies' time. And this is a song you put me onto, Rick. It's a beautiful song. Uh, Special View, aka Telescopic Love from The Only Ones. Uh, the B-side of Another Girl on Another Planet, their only hit, maybe? Uh, well, yeah, I think one of them. But, um, Some great stuff on the, uh, the best I know, of the yeah. ones, which, it's just a band kind of- Another Girl on Another Planet. That might be up for the best intro in a rock and roll record of all time. I'll put up, Won't Get Fooled Again, and Another Girl on Another Planet. Foxy, he's already putting up Money for Nothing. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, <laughs> maybe we'll run that competition next week. Yeah, although Walk of Life is particularly good. <laughs> <laughs> here well, comes Charlie singing <laughs> oldies, goldies, <laughs> bop a lula, baby, here I <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, nonsense. Walk of life. Okay, so this is a uh, special view from The Only Ones, a song for the ladies, and that's it. See you next Goodbye. Time. Athlete and Westside on XFM 104.9, sunny day, 19, uh... 2007. It's <laughs> going so well, wasn't it? Yeah. Going so well, Ricky then, Gervais. Once again, the English language <laughs> tripped you up. <laughs> the, the mouth with the tongue lips. <laughs> exactly. Was all over the brain and talk. <laughs> the brain and talk through the throat. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, language is his tool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick, I think we should do some introductions because I think it seems to me every week we kind of everyone knows who you are because you're you know the face of the moment, but uh, they forget who you know me and the K Man are. Well, with me, Steve Merchant. Hi, and the K Man, who's our producer and friend. And uh, can I just say that I really look forward to this show. Oh. Like, it, you know, I, I, I get like, oh great, we're gonna do a show, and we're gonna play some tracks we like and have a laugh. But now it's I, I'm looking forward to meeting Carl. Of course, honestly, I come in and I see his face and I go, all right. And I'm, you know, I'm just, just great, like a, just a little friend. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You know when a kid comes around to play with him and you go, oh, and they come out to play and it's like the little friends. It's like that with Carl. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't see him in the week, you see, we deliberately stay away from him in the week so that he'll, you know, he'll yeah. be fresh to us. It was, go on. You start off friendly, like you did today. <laughs> And as soon as Steve turns up, you start getting nasty and saying things about my little bald head. <laughs> no, I said, I, look, okay, right, listen, let me explain. Carl was making the tea, and you know those bins, the sort of like a round sort of Metal Mickey type bin that you can take off a thing? I went, oh, that would make a good little helmet. It would make it look like Metal Mickey because it's the same shape as his head. Sure. Right? And I put it on and- So far, so good, Rick. Really. <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> <laughs> That's just two mates having a laugh. <laughs> right. You're putting a bean on another man's head. <laughs> right. It's right. So I put it on and the swing bit, through gravity and the angle, swung and hit him in the nose. Sure. Right? He went, ow. 
And I went, it, I said something like, it's all right. Yeah, of course, because <laughs> you were being amused. <laughs> yeah, I said, it's all right, don't worry. Yeah. And he went, no, I've just washed my hair. Yeah. That annoyed me. That did annoy you, Because sure. just because there was lots of, like, shit and coffee and, and horrible, uh, gunk. In his hair or? No, in the, <laughs> in the inside of the bin. Sure. But what annoyed me was, he's hardly got any hair. At this point, he looks so, like Moby. Yeah, so I said, I, I, I took the bin off. Yeah. And it, I was having that, and it, I thought, you, you, you ruined my what, what you Do you know what I mean? I, I said, what's your house? I said, we could do that now in 30 seconds. Yes. And he looked at me like I was in the wrong. <laughs> I know. So Rick, that, that annoys me about I him. know. That doesn't annoy yeah. him. Um, but otherwise, he's like, he's like childlike. Yeah, you know, in so it's many great. He doesn't understand that he's hurting your emotions and your feelings. Yeah, right? but but also, right, we were playing football. So I can't play football, right? And so we were playing. Was that football. just in the office or? Yeah, just in the yeah, office yeah. before you came, right? And then um, we were sort of kicking it back and forth, and I started kicking it a bit hard. And uh, but he was quite good. I, I said, I said, this is great, right? And uh, we finished anyway because we thought we'd break some. Right? And um, I went, I bet you were quite good at football, weren't you? And I actually thought, I thought he looked like quite a natural, you know, I thought he'd be good, he's from the north, and I thought he'd, that's all he'd have. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. And he went, I said, uh, I suppose you're quite good at football, and he turned, the quickest flash, I went, I've scored once, <laughs> right? He said, and that's because I was being chased by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh, save it. Yeah. He went, no, I said, please, please save it, because I want to tell Steve that. No, you can continue now. Please tell us the rest of the story. You've scored a goal once, well, you because you're being chased by a bee. Yeah, you've done it now, really. I was on the, uh, there must be more the, to that story, came in. I was in the school team. I wasn't that good as a kid at football, to right. be honest. Um, <laughs> mainly down to, I think it's because of my dad. My dad wasn't into football. Right. And I think that's the way it works, isn't it? If your dad's into it, mm. then you could be a footballer when you're older. Sure, yeah. Because you're into it. And, um, so I was in the school team because I got on with the other lads. Uh -huh. and they'd let, they let me in the team. Probably got, yeah. Sure. And, um, yeah, I was stood there doing nothing because I didn't really know what to do. I, didn't, I never knew which way I was meant to be shooting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, got all that messed up. Yeah, that is a I just stood there, right, and, <laughs> uh, with my hands behind my back, and, uh, something landed on me, on, like, this part of my thumb. You got, you can't just point, it's radio. It's this bit here. Right, yeah, um, the, the fleshy bit, the fleshy yeah. bit of the thumb, thumb. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, what's that? <laughs> and I looked down, and it was a bee. Thumb. Oh, it was a bee, yeah. It was a bee on me, so I start running, yeah. try to get away from it, and bees, that's just something interesting about bees. More chance of getting stung by a bee in windy weather than any other sort of weather. That's incredible. Uh, anyway, so I'm running away. <laughs> and he said there was no more. Extraordinary. I've already learnt so many, many things. You're being chased by the bees. So windy. I'm running. It's on your thumb. Is it still on your thumb now? It's sort of gripping onto me like a stag Clever. beetle. Clever. Clever. <laughs> like a stag beetle. I love his. Oh, or a bee. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm running, and I, I, I'm running towards, like, the goal. Yeah. Oh, God. And the ball comes to me. Yes. Wallop. Get it in. Brilliant. What happened to the beater? Did it sting you? They die, don't they? <laughs> I mean, ultimately, it died, sure, but did that, that particular moment oh, did it sting you? This was probably about 20 years ago, so I imagine... No, no, no. Once the bee stings so you, So did it sting it. you? Yeah, but did it sting you? Though. Yeah. <laughs> right, that was the question. When did it sting you? When I was playing football. No! <laughs> <laughs> Carl, do you want me asking? You say you're on the school football team. Was there just eleven boys at your school? Listen, listen, Carl. Oh, what I mean is, at what point in this story did the bee sting you? Uh, straight away After or half time? <laughs> <laughs> Play a record time. <laughs> oh, <it's the> <laughs> Depeche Mode, I feel loved, on XFM 104.9. It's about 17 minutes past one on this Saturday. Go on. We'll never interrupt me when it's going that well. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking of. That was about, that was my record, that was about four or five sentences. <laughs> true, true. They I had what I was semantic was syntax, there was, there was capital letters, full stops, yeah. grammar, you everything. You didn't even get the time out, did you? What Why? time was it? Quick, what time was it? I interrupted, it's Sorry, I should I was so eager. One. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me. Steve Smirch. Merchant. Smirch. And the K-Man. The K-Man. We're all giving ourselves nicknames now. Yeah. Can I just clear something up? Just, this is only a very, very personal thing. Um, lots of people who listen to the show that I've spoken to, friends of friends and stuff, they think that I'm the guy that plays Gareth in The Office, because my voice is obviously very similar. It couldn't be further than the truth. It's, it's, I'm so, that's so not the case. If anyone's listening, they it think be it's further me. Than the truth. It I don't like want to take credit playing. for Mackenzie's performance. That's a guy called Mackenzie no. Crook. He's a brilliant actor. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's seen his performance. It's not me. Admittedly, he has loosely based his accent for the character on my accent, because obviously it's a comical accent. We all admit that. Yeah. We'll agree with that. But that's it. That's where the similarity ends. Yeah. Oh. Mackenzie's a good looking fellow, isn't he? He's a good looking lad. I mean, that's not a 
That's not what I was saying. Me. I know, because no. you're saying I'm a good-looking guy as well. You're just you're, saying we're two differently good-looking guys. Yeah, it, Carl, it's all people are all different looks. I mean, you could say Brad Pitt's good-looking, and then you could say George Clooney's good-looking, and they're both great-looking blokes, they don't look alike. Exactly. So for me to say, um, Steve and Mackenzie aren't alike, Mackenzie's a good-looking fella. Exactly. You know, if you did a Ben guy around there, there, they weren't mutually exclusive, there would be a crossover of good-lookingness. Yeah, and I'm in that pool with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Wow. Well, it's quite a big pool, Rick, and I'm in there, certainly with them. Yeah, not... Yeah. I mean, I'm in one of those Venn diagram circles. You are, yeah, you're over this one. Well, so you what's in there? <laughs> that's, I noticed that's a separate one, floating off from all the others. Yeah, lizards and parrots. Ah, right. Okay, right. so... It's but... good to be included in something, though. It's good to be part of a gang, Carl, that's very important. <laughs> yeah. Only right, that's cleared up. Depeche Mode there, uh, and I feel loved. Who would have thought Depeche Mode would have been that huge? I think, I think I'm seeing those little lads from... Basildon with little mm. plinky plonky sound. I thought that'd be over, they'd be like Visage or something. Mm. That'd be it. You know, they're stadium rock fillers. They're yeah. huge. They conquered America. He went through some hard times. He came at the other end. Well done. But see, I think this very, what you just said there is a very good example of why they are and, wh and why certain other bands aren't. Because if you think about it, for me, you see, whenever I think of a band name, if I see a new band's coming along or whatever, I always use a very simple test, which is, can you imagine that you're the announcer at a huge event, maybe it's like broadcasting around the world like Live Aid or Nelson something. Nelson Mandela Or concert. it's a Nelson Mandela Freedom Concert. Yeah. And you can imagine someone He's saying, there. He's there. And Nelson's there. Yeah, they're with the Spice Girls. Oh, they're all there, there. But you can imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Depeche Mode. Yeah. Like, go, go, go. Ladies the Rolling Stones. The Who! Exactly. But you can imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Visage. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome our headline act? Welcome Idlewild! <laughs> exactly. It ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Ned's Atomic Dustbin! <laughs> It doesn't, do you know what I mean? You just know the it. The levelers! Some fans aren't gonna make it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mega City 4! <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's so just it's a simple test. We'd like you to do that at If home. you're thinking of, if you're thinking of, uh, starting a band, or you've just named your band, you're yeah. just beginning, just tell, phone in, tell us, or email in, tell us what your yeah. band name is, and we, and we will do, use that simple and test. And we will do the test. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage... The Frank and Walters! <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Eat World! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cooper Temple Claws! <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen for those lads. <laughs> it is a good It's one. a simple test, anyway, but, uh, Hundred reasons, please welcome to the stage, hundred reasons. Hundred reasons I think would work quite well. <laughs> I'm just gonna give the email address, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. If I could. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Pop Will Eat Itself! <laughs> Carl, have you got like a sound effect or something of like, can we get the atmosphere cheering. if we're gonna test? Cheering, we'll seek it out with. Have you got something there? Have a look on there. I'll just, I'm just looking in the NME, uh, for the kind of forthcoming gigs of the smaller known bands, and uh, it might be a useful place to uh, just begin the, uh, Ladies test. and gentlemen, Peoples around the world, will you please welcome to the stage, Chumba Awamba! <laughs> Have you got a sound effect? We got one. Nice, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, the Parkinsons! <laughs> <laughs> playing in Leicester this week. Uh, so uh, I look forward to that. That's a good plug, isn't it? Uh, let me see who else. If, if anyone wants to pop down to Leicester to see the Parkinsons. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cycle Fly! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, uh, there's, a, there's a genuine one here. This is someone, it's Simon's uh, emailed and he says, uh, will you just test this name for us? Okay, Carl, if you can, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Coach! <laughs> <laughs> not utterly convinced. No. It's not too bad. It's not too I'm worried about the sound effect. We start, we start to sound like Chris Moyles or something. Well, he, well he's a top broadcaster. Everyone loves him. Losing weight as well. He is hilarious. <laughs> funny, funny man. <laughs> just, there's one more coming here. I'll just check this one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome, this is Chris in Oxford. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, meanwhile, back in communist Russia. <laughs> is that a band? I assume so. I assume it's his band. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Well, how does he listen to us in, uh, hold on now, this is only local radio. How does he listen to us in Oxford? Well, if only there was some kind of digital format that he could listen via the web net. What is Carl, it? What is the, uh, what is it? What? <laughs> How does he listen in Oxford? He can listen on Sky Digital. Go on. Channel 864. Lovely. 864. Yeah. And, um, on, on the, the web. Yeah. Okay, what would that web address be? xfm.co.uk. Sure. Click on the audio. Yep. And, uh, you get, you get 
XFM, ten seconds behind. It okay. actually happened. Perfect. Uh, just, just out uh, of interest, what's the point of saying that they, if they can't sort of get us in London to listen to that because <laughs> they won't be, and they're, they're either, they're already, they're either in London, so they won't go through this nonsense, or they're in Leicester and they can't hear us saying Sky Digital. Yeah, we haven't thought that through at all. And because you might work in London for a bit and then have a Go back and spread the word. And like, leave. Yeah. Go back and spread the word, disciples. Move back to Leicester. Yeah. Tell your mates. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soon, any number of soon XFM is the most listened to radio station in Britain. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What we need is uh, people on Radio 2 to give it a plug every day. <laughs> That'd be ideal. Yeah, yeah, or Radio 1. Yeah. 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 Any of the big rivals. Virgin. Yeah. I mean, we've often plugged Virgin, it's a good station. 105.8 Virgin Radio London. Mm. It's a great station, really good station. Hard 106.2. <laughs> Lovely. You're listening to Magic 105.4. Are you getting, you're getting quite a lot of voiceover work now, aren't you? I am, yeah. That's not... I've stopped all that, though. Have you? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's good. Well, you know, I, you know, I'm all right now, I've got yeah. a bit of money. Classic 60s bands, I've just suddenly... Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, The Scaffold! Oh, The Scaffold. You, <laughs> you remember The Scaffold, Tom? You picked yeah. the, the lead singer looks a bit like him. <clears throat> but you know whose brother that is in The Scaffold, don't you? Mike McGear. Do you know whose brother that is? What? Do you remember the, the scaffold? scaffold? They did, uh, yeah, we'll scaffold. drink a drink a drink to Lily the Pink, the Pink, the Pink, the Pink, the The Rose the Human Rift. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the entry. Yeah. I, and do you know whose brother that is? Whose brother? The lead singer? No, the Mike McGear in it. The sort of one of the main men in it. He's one of the songwriters in, uh, the, no, the Scaffold. Don't. Paul McCartney. He's is he? Talking. Yeah. I didn't realise that. Yeah, that's Paul McCartney's brother. Think, think, think of that when they go in for Christmas. <laughs> so I think Lily the Pink was what, about 1970? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was number one, wasn't it? Christmas yeah, number one? Yeah, yeah, big number one, yeah. I might don't know if it was Christmas number one. Two Little Boys was 1969, last year. No, it definitely was number one. Yeah, scaffold. but I don't know if it was, it was Christmas number one. It was, it yeah. was, it was, because yeah. I remember it was, I did it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they go home at Christmas and <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. McCartney goes, All right, boys, how are, how are you, Paul? How are you doing? I'm just starting a new band called Wings. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so this is Linda. All right, don't yeah, sit down. Mike, what are you doing? Just had number one. Brilliant. Round of applause. How many numbers do you have, Paul? Uh, 19. Still. We know what we like, don't we? We are drinking, 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 the human race. Paul goes, wow, if you want to. The long and winding. Boring. We are drinking, 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 drinking. Linda, do you want to be in the scaffold? We're probably going to go on tour and stuff. I know you love it. I quite like it. Yeah, we're drinking, 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 drinking. You're not going to be in Wings if you're going to play with him. Well, I got you know make a tricky decision. I mean, that's a no, great song. I've always loved it. It's you, Christmas number one. What are you doing eating his bacon? Well, I love you it. Don't eat, you don't eat bacon. Yeah, but I love the music. He's, I mean, what? he's a great Stop guy. Stop it! What are you doing? Well, I just you know I love the music. We all drink a drink a drink to leave the thing to think. No, no, you don't. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so. Oh, shut Thank you very much for the country <laughs> iron. <laughs> Oh, that. imagine that, because imagine they're doing going, well, you've had 19 number ones. I mean, you know, it can be very tight. Yeah, if yeah. you stay like this with a yeah. scaffold, yeah. I'm gonna raw, rule the 70s. <laughs> yeah, if things that carry on going like they're going now, <laughs> the scaffold could... Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> will you please welcome, welcome to the stage, Beck. Oh, nice one. Dandy Warhols, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Dandy Warhols. There you are, it's, not, it's never going to That sounds like levellers crossed with w wonder it's stuff. Rubbish, isn't it, really? I mean, well, you know, it's fine, it's chirpy. It's a nice old song, but it's, it's, you know, it's not... It's that thing of it's just not essential. You I just don't it. really need it in your life. You, if it never if it never occurred, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. You know? Do you know what Carl just said? Go on. Were you listening? Not really. He looked out the window, and he looked at me, and he was looking at me, and I looked over at him, and he looked, I said, see, now's... That that's that would be good to die now. No, what? He went that weather. That would be good to die. And I said, of what? He went old age. Yeah. What's going on up there? He's a philosopher, Rick. He is. He's on he? a different no, plane to us. Say like that. The other week, I came in when it was really miserable, and I said to you, God, can you imagine dying today? Yeah. Because whereas it's today really you feel it would be a much better day to die because it's bright. Yeah, the curtains open. Sun sure. shining. It's like... I mean, you'd still be a bit angsty about the dying thing, wouldn't you? I mean, I don't suppose that would be alleviated. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> hopefully we'll still be broadcasting, you know, when one of us reaches that happy moment and we can, um, we can check. Yeah. It's quite a lot of emails, Rick, coming in about, uh, 
band names. I think a lot of people are going wrong for a simple reason. They think it's funny to have an ironic band name. Yeah. They think it's a bit comical. And I yeah. just don't think there's any great bands that have had a comical name that have made it into what stadium was that, filling. What was that band, Where's Me Jumper? What were they called? I don't know what they were called. I mean, the obvious example of one that, that was never going to make it, Spl internationally. Splodgeness abounds? <laughs> Splodgeness abounds. No, I like them. Splod no. Splodgeness abounds. Splodgeness abounds. They were great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Carter the Unstoppable Sex Machine. <laughs> USM. These are some of the ones we've had emailed in. These are bands obviously that haven't ma made it so far, and I don't think they will. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Lazy Birds. Nope. No. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Paper Clips. <laughs> That's not a real band. That's is what it? someone said in. I don't know, yeah, but no band name is weirder than the others, and also you grow into it. I mean, the, st the Stones and the Beatles are iconic because they are iconic bands. What, you think you'll grow into? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shuttle Rock. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Treehouse Casino. I don't think they're gonna- <laughs> That's just made up! Well, possibly. Well, they all are, but they obviously. Are. But my point is, people say there's yeah. no logic to band names, but if you think a band name like the Smiths, Great. that's genius. It, is, it yeah. sums up everything that band is about, yeah. you know, the kind of- they're, they're capturing that mediocre world of grim up northness, you know? My favorite, Sonic Youth. Sonic Youth is genius. Nirvana. These are- these are incredible name, band names, so yeah. there is some logic to it. Yeah. I genuinely Sonic believe it. It's not just arbitrary words. What about the madness? Cure. The Mad Cure. Madness sounds rubbish, well, but they're good, aren't they? Yeah, but again, they're, they're never gonna be- they were never going to be world beaters. But they were a comical band, essentially. Yeah, they, they were, were a knees-up party band. Yeah. Madness is fine for that. But they had some great songs as well, and it, uh, but it did, then, it, then it sort of turned it all, because then... I mean, Rick, I don't know how many members... Not Home Today is a great song, man. This, this, is, this is from an email. I don't know how many members of the band there are in Chimney Factory. <laughs> <laughs> but which... If there's five people, who decided? Had they all agreed? Yeah, that's a great... That's the best name you know we've come up with. Do you decided? Dell. Right. Well, he started the band and they yeah. ra rehearsed around his house, so Dale went, look, it's called Chimney Factory because yeah. my granny's doing it. They go, alright Dale, but it's not, I've got some other, but no, yeah. it's called Chimney Factory. I've got, I own the van and the amps. There's paper clips gone, there's a band in Leicester <laughs> called Paper Clips. We can't, you know, we just argue over yeah. that forever. Yeah. And anyway, just all I'm saying is think before you name your band, all right? Because it's never going to happen if you've got a comical band name. There was a feminist band called Clitoris All Sorts, <laughs> which right. is quite good, isn't yeah, it? But you laugh and then you just think, oh. Yeah. You know, I'm never gonna have that on my t-shirt. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Glitter us all sorts. <laughs> it's that time of the day now, talking of that. Yep. Um, Song for the Lovers. Sure, it's beautiful. Now, Steve, uh, I mean, I will play great old tunes till the cows come in. We got, yes. we got to give them a little bit of Dandy Warhols and Air and Athlete, I know that, and they're mm. great, they're good, right? But, um, I wanted to play a Cat Stevens song, but I thought I'd better not, because I've, you know, Play that a little bit. And we quite like resurrecting old reputations, don't we? People like Alton John who are, had bad faces, or David Bowie. And, people whose you know, names now are l largely laughed at in yeah, uh, the, the serious yeah. rock or circles. Or people that people might not have considered. I thought Cassie was like, oh no, Rod Stewart, I thought. Was he Rod Stewart? Many people now are thinking of the leopard, hot pants, yeah, and the ludicrous yeah, hair. Yeah, think sexy, and all those sort of awful stadium sort of disco things. But he wrote beautiful tracks from Maggie May to, and I thought, hold on, two birds with one stone. What about a Rod Stewart song? Written by Cat Stevens. Wow. Is there such a thing? The first cut is the deepest. Let's hear it, Rick. On this album as well, is The Killing of George. You know, Georgie Part 1 and 2, remember? About the gay bloke who, Georgie Boy was gay, I guess. His favourite song. Right. Carl's favourite song. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going, oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. I said about, um, and I said, uh, did not intend to take his life, he just pushed it when he, he gets mugged and killed. Do you know what he said? Go on. I was sitting outside, I was singing, I was taking the He went, well, I said, as I said, they go out too late. <laughs> they go out too yeah. late? He meant gay people go out too late. He went, no, they do. I went, what do you mean? He said, well, they're always out, they go out when people are coming home. He said, if he'd have been in bed by ten, he'd still be alive today. <laughs> That's a sobering lesson, And he went, there's one that works here and he's shattered every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're gay and you're listening, just be in bed earlier. Go yeah. out when sensible people go out. Yeah. You're right, we're not on the continent, Carl, if, if, you're, you're, if you're gay and you're not in bed by ten, Go home. Yeah. I don't get it. First cut is the deepest, Rod Stewart. Song for the night. Air, don't be lying. XFM, mm -hmm. 104.9, 5 to 2. Absolutely. Ricky Ricky Gervais. Gervais. With me, Steve, Steve Merchant. Merchant. Smirch. Smirch. The Smirch. The Smirch. And the K-Man. KP, Carl Pilkington, the K-man. Pressing the buttons. Yeah. See that in Heat this week? What was it? About the 
campaign to stop Carl going back to Manchester. You know, because he's a miserable sort of northerner who goes London's crap when I want to go back up north. Yeah. And I, I, I only need 40 quid a week to live up there like King and all that sort of yes. rubbish. Right, well, uh, um, uh, Boyd from Heat, um, look, well, we met him at the, um, that award ceremony. Oh, yeah. And uh, we were saying about, oh, yeah, he really enjoys Carl. Like, he's getting a lot of, a lot oh, of people, people like people Carl. And I was going, oh, yeah, but he's thinking of leaving. He's going, oh, st start a campaign. And he did, and he r put it in there. So the campaign, so write in if you like Carl. If, if, if you think he's really annoying, then we'll stop talking to him. Yeah. But, I mean, I like him. I love him. Yeah. Have you ever read the, uh, White Man... The White Van Man column in The Sun, Carl. Seen it, Are you yeah. familiar with this? This is where every day in The Sun they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just, you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper. Mm -hmm. And he has to answer, uh, or just give his opinions, really, on, uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl. Because we know you to see what your, your views are. Yeah. So, um, just the first thing that comes to your mind, the sort of, your initial reaction to it's each of these. Uh, things, but you don't need to know about them, it's just your philosophy on it. Yeah, so, just your views. You know, yeah. I um, have a few days off this week, remember, so I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I mean, you stayed in London, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you didn't anywhere. bury yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? I don't want to see the news, but I didn't. Okay. Right. Um, so, what are your view? What was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Don't like him. No. You know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat hanger in his gob. That sort of. <laughs> right. Again, it's radio, Carl. Radio. It's a great face. It's a funny face you're pulling. Yeah. You, and, you know, but you know, a radio. And it's, that's, that's a problem for you, is it? And, uh, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I mm -hmm. opened up the paper on the, on the Monday or something, and it had like, oh, he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit... Key. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. what's the second All question? Right. Um, there have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? More youth clubs are needed, aren't they? <laughs> you think more youth clubs? I like that. No, I okay. can't. I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of like you want a bobby on the beat that'll clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they come Is out of national service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And, it, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did you, did you used to go to, uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? Uh, you used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> so I, more, more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. Um, I love him. If you're at home, j just make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest from the heart exactly stuff opinions. than this. This is great. Go on. This is not pre-planned. These are your direct responses now. Oh, I, pr I promise you, Carl did not know what we were going to do. He never knows what we're going to do, and he always answers honestly. That is the beauty of Carl. What is it's your not view? an act. What is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> he appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it go ahead. Oh, he's genius. Okay. Um, Is he happy with it? He's like your nan. Yeah, yeah. He's what do you make of uh, Michael Greco's character Beppe being axed from EastEnders? Uh, problem for you? The whole soap thing. What's it's back in Coronation Street, isn't she? Uh, what's her name? Who? Beth. Beth Lins. But, she yeah. thought she'd go off and be yeah. a bigger star. Yeah. All went wrong. And now she's coming back. Yeah, yeah. It always happens. Doesn't Beppy it? will be back. Yeah, no one really cares. Sure, sure. Yeah. What, was, what was the van reply? What was the guy? The white the van man one? says, uh, obviously they feel the character has run his course, but yeah. I think <laughs> he's a pretty good actor, and I can't understand why. See, I mean, obviously there's a, a white van man there mm. who's also got an opinion on script the, development. The through line, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the through line of soap opera. The, the, the twelve week narrative, the, the arc really showed it's itself just, up. The two two last ones. I want your opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret two point five million research project? To find out what? If what, they can claim cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? I no. think the cat's fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> Mm. That cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you reckon of no. cloning generally, Carl? You concerned about it? I think they're cloning for organs, I you know, they, they just grow them for the, you know. Do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you, like, make something else that's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's not gonna do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> great. and finally- What do you on the World Council? Yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, what do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or...? I think it was lunch break. <laughs> yeah. their own right. It's their own time, <laughs> I think, fair enough. It only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. Is that a problem? 
they moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. You think fair enough? If, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting, you think fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. Thanks Bye. very much, Carl. Well, Carl, we'll have uh, more of uh, Carl's uh, world weary opinions next time uh, on the show. Listen, I want to play a track that I love. I, I, I can't wait for this track. It's, it's by a great band. Just going to do it before Steve does this. Uh, coming up, we're going to give away a great game. I've, um, well, I'm sort of clearing out my flat with Tony, and then we've got you know a lot of junk there. And uh, we're going to give away a great game coming up. You've seen it, Steve. You're excited. I'm looking forward to that. It's a board, board game. game. It's a board game that we're all going to sign. It's going to really be signed by Jerv Smirch. KP the K Man. From so you could win that. The classic album Copper Blue by Sugar. Listening to it again recently reminded how good it was. Yeah. This is the track Hoover Dam. Play it. White Stripes. Fell in love with a girl on XFM 104.9. It's ten past two. Right, okay, that's the first hour out of the way. Next hour, Steve, I've got a game to give away. As I say, I'm sort of cleaning out my flat a little bit and uh, we we're going to throw away stuff and I went, I went say, oh, whoa, 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 don't throw that away. Yeah. I can give that away on the show because XFM don't give us anything to give away. No. Does anyone care what happens weekends? No. There's people coming here going, oh, he hasn't turned up, fiddling with stuff, fire alarms going off, the library, but we were looking for a track we played a couple of weeks ago on the same album and it's gone. Yeah, it's been pinched since we last played it. This is a, I can't believe it, they're moving, that's a, like a tip out there. And I have to... Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a disgrace, Carl. It is. It is absolutely, it's disgusting. How it's many of the DJs on this station have won multiple awards like Ricky Gervais? Yeah. How, do, how, how, do how many of them are double award are winning? To have someone of my calibre. I hurt my ankle, didn't I, moving a chair. I had to even move my own chair in here, and I hit my ankle. That would teach me not to wear socks. Yeah. The socks would have just taken out the stain. I think, I think just walking around barefoot generally is a bad <laughs> You know, there's the needles, Rick, there's all sorts I of things. I know, or that, well, Posh does it in her video, she walks around barefoot. Oh, you love My it. heart's got a mind of its own. Ricky absolutely loves the current Victoria Beckham Yeah, da -da 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 -da. I like the sentiment, my heart's got a mind of its own. It's sort of like, doesn't matter what I'm thinking in my head, my heart says something else. Of course, what we did for the last week was change the lyric. Just walk around do. for ages. Does anyone else do that? Just going, things like, um, things like, my wife's got a cock of her own. Uh, it's just things like that and uh, my, seriously hours of amusement. Yeah, <laughs> just changing it. Uh, 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 my my knob's got, got some balls of its own. own. We're doing that for a week. <laughs> Meant to be working. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyway, you were going to give away this game, Rick. Yeah, it's called Donuts, and it's a game for four players or two to four. Have players. you ever played it yourself? Um, I watched. We sort of got it for a party, and I watched some people. Um, Can I try and sell it to punters who may yeah, go on. play the part of a crazy donut loving elephant in this hilarious game of fun and fast action? Yeah. You put on a little elephant thing and you have to pull up the get up the donuts. Brilliant. Can you be the first elephant to get all your donuts on your trunk? Be, f uh, be the first one. Uh, some of the first one is. So this used. isn't a sex game, by the way. There's you, no euphemisms there. Some of this is a bit slightly damaged. The packaging. That's why I couldn't read that. You're joking. Yeah. But don't worry, because you're not asking much for this, are you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll start at five pounds. Bear in mind it'll be signed by double award winning yeah. Ricky. No, of course it's free. And uh, um, Carl went. You got a question? I went. No, he said. Uh, well, something about the elephant man. I went, <laughs> something about the elephant. Yeah, man. and I went. Uh, yeah, you know John Merrick. He went. Yeah, he went. Yeah, something about that. Awful, wasn't it? I went. You know where Michael Jackson actually bid for the skeleton of that? And uh, he went. What would the skeleton be affected? I went without. It grows. It that's what happens. It's nice. And he went. You don't see any of that about these days, do you? <laughs> <laughs> any great, I just said save it. Although, of course, you have to put on these masks when you play Donutters, so yeah. in a strange way, that looks kind of Merrick-esque. Yeah. Uh, and, um, the game, Rick, I should just tell people listening, is, is Elephantastic. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> it says that on the box. It so is Elephantastic, it is Elephantastic. I mean, you yourself, can I say yeah. a question, actually? This Go is on. a possible question. Okay. Should we um, sign it first? We should sign it, but, uh, yeah. based on the Elephant Man question, obviously, mm. um, we all know who directed the Elephant Man film. Sure, don't sure. We? Mm -hmm. So yeah, Parker. No, David Lynch. Lynch, of course, yeah. But uh, do you know who one of the um, the people that got that film made was? He's a very famous comedian. It was his production company that got it up, up and running. He may be an executive producer. I think he was even the producer of it. And no. uh, he's an American, famous American comic. Actually, you wouldn't imagine this was the same guy who is also producing a very serious sober film like The Elephant Man, alright? We want to know who was that man. It's a bit hard for that. Well, yeah, but I mean that was sort of that was separate. A bit hard for that. Have you seen anything else that's Elephantastic? 
Not even Wellafant was Elephantastic. He was Wellafant. Have, have you got any more ta uh, memorabilia that you want to uh, give <laughs> yeah, to people? Maybe get rid of. Because yeah. I have to say, I've got the loads, counter won't take it away. I've got loads of junk in my house. I've got an old fridge freezer in the front garden. Anyone's welcome to come and pick that up anytime. I'll sign it for them. But what about children climbing in it? That's not one of those with the handles, is it? There's several children trapped in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's a sobering lesson. You know what? Right. We're going to pick it up. Um, it's a problem though, isn't it? Because you can't just smash it up. You're right anymore. No. I don't no. know what you meant to do. Well, listen, right. When I was growing up, I remember the council um, used to charge five pounds or something to take away like cookers and fridges. So my dad used to bury them mm. down the bottom of my garden. I don't know. Th th there's there's a cooker. There's a fridge. Fr there's a freezer of some sort. There's a dog and a couple of cats. They were dead. I'm not saying. My, I mean, my father's quite a mean man, as you know that. Uh, yeah. that but he, uh, my dad used to uh, do that with dead relatives. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. those funeral parties very, take the piss. Very expensive. So a, a, a funeral can be, you know, up to forty quid. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Whereas so a shovel, a shovel borrowed yeah. off the bloke next door. Yeah, yeah, that's a and, massive savings and not given back. To be honest, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, he's going to go soon. <laughs> was, it, was, was he going to say? Okay, to win uh, donuts signed by Mr. Ricky Gervais and two other blokes you've never heard of. Is that <laughs> fantastic? Yeah. And the question is, what was the famous name? The name of the famous comedian? Uh, American give up comedian, the number. Give up the number. That produced uh, and had heavy production involvement in the film The Elephant Man. The email address. This is ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Carl, what's the, uh, phone number? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Right, next up, we've had a lot of requests. Carl's popularity is growing. They want to hear his, um, his super mega mix, uh, the Britney Spears thing. Big it up. Big it up. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell no, us what it is. It. All right, it's, um, Mark being Blade, the vocals of The Unknown over Britney Spears. Hit me, baby, one more time. Let's hear right. it. It's, it's highly illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Go on then, back announce it, Carl. It's yours. Go on. That's uh, Mark being played there with a bootleg. And what's it called? You called it something, haven't you? You cleverly called it something. What did you call it? Um. <laughs> Nick this record one more time. Good. Very yeah, good. Uh, Carl Perkin Peter Pilkington there breaking all kinds of copyright rules. Now, coming up, we're going to be talking a little bit of Feng Shui, the art of. Moving things around so it's better. The ancient oriental art of rearranging your living room. Yeah, the, or <laughs> <laughs> the ancient art of don't sit near a window. <laughs> exactly. Because you won't get any money for it. <laughs> and we've got a, we've got a book. Well, it's, we've uh, been exploring we're... Feng Shui for our yeah. amusement. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be reading some uh, great things. This is just uh, good. It's good, solid Feng Shui advice for us. I mean, what do we need to know? I mean, just keep those questions coming. If you've got any question for Carl, don't forget that's an ongoing thing. Anything in the world, any question, personal problems. Philosophies on like it can be out of the just ask Carl if you want you know just ask Carl, okay? All right, Carl, you up for that, aren't you? Yeah, that's and right. you give your honest opinion, won't you? Always. Yeah. Yeah. Should we give away uh, donuts? Oh, we, it's this. What it's been won. Who's won it, Carl? Scott um, Hammond. Scott well, well done, well done, yeah. Scott. He'll be loving that. He's he's probably gonna have a party, especially to play donuts. We've had uh, a number of right answers, but I'm afraid Scott's the winner. And the question, of course, was uh, which famous American comedian was heavily involved in the production of the film The Elephant Man? It was, of course, Mel Brooks. Surprising. And uh, he's got a company called Brooks Film. Our maybe. first uh, first person that called in, I think he was a bit confused. He said, "Is it testicle testicles?" Yeah, yeah. When what? The you went testicles. Yeah. What was that illness years ago? <laughs> right. There was um, a couple of lads at our school. Oh yeah. I had really big heads. <laughs> right. And webbed fingers. <laughs> and webbed fingers? And... Sorry, wait, 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 was that... Hold on, did you find him in a pond? Did they used to be little tadpoles? No, Carl, you're not too. confusing your past with an old episode no, of Doctor no. Who, are you? <laughs> 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 what were they called, these two? The, oh, I, can't, I didn't mix with them. Right, uh, right. It was just like... Of it, course not. Th there was a... Nobody thought anything of it at school. Cause no, like, sure. It used to. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It's the north. Oh, there, there goes the creature from the black lagoon. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he's late. brilliant at trigonometry. He's late for double maths. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I didn't think anything what of it. What is it called? What is the disease called? Where two fellas are they not even related? Rubbish. Not related. This, uh, were you near a, a nuclear power station when you were growing up? Yeah. You weren't really. Yeah. God, this is 
explains so much. This has got oh, a bit heavy. I don't think that's it. Hey, talking of uh, enormous heads, yeah. you were at the, uh, the Pop Idol final, weren't you, Rick? You went yeah. in there, just because obviously Rick's a huge fan of Pop Idol, he wanted to be there, he wanted yeah. to give his support. Quite seriously, there was no irony there. We were, yeah, we were he genuinely is a fan of it. And um, he was, uh, you, you, you sort of had photos taken with various people, yeah, of course. you were a bit drunk and you wanted to have a yeah. memento of it. And it's obviously yeah. a picture of you with uh, fat man Rick Waller. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the best one is a picture of Ricky and his girlfriend with Dr. Fox, yeah. whose head <laughs> is twice is the size of, of any other head. It's quite remarkable. I he's don't know how they It was a lovely bloke. It was really nice to meet him and everything. But in the and he's, he's got he looks like an immaculate tan. And he's always happy and he's you know he's. It looks really on the picture. It looks like someone you might see in a carnival who's built a huge papier mâché head. <laughs> and it's yeah. just, like Frank Sidebottom <laughs> just sort of walking down the road. It's just incredible. Dr. Fox didn't used to go to your school, did he? He used to hang around with a mate. They were great swimmers. <laughs> they were brilliant swimmers. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Have we got another song lined up? Yeah. What yeah. Are we gonna play? Bit for a munch. Bit mm -hmm. of who? For a munch. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Farrah Munch, got ya, XFM 104.9. Well, as we promised from Feng Shui, um, what do you wanna know? Ratio of witness, it's, it's a one of those little books that you see at the sort of like the front desk of like Waterstones or mm. Dylan's or one of those And it's just, uh, it's a little guide, it's um, uh, should I say what it is? I'm allowed, yeah, I'm allowed, aren't I? Well. Lillian Two's little book of um, Feng Shui, and uh, obviously you can't go into it in depth, but it's some little... You know. Just some little sort of nuggets, I suppose. Yeah, ratio of windows. The ratio of windows to doors in your rooms should not exceed three to one. Too many windows calls all your luck to seep away. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, it is also better not to have windows on the wall opposite the door. Is that the case in your place, uh, Carl? Because you may need, may, you may need to brick that up when you get back <laughs> later. I always remember, um, I used to work nights. Yeah. Right? And it was when my brother just because sort I of got kicked out of the army. Yeah. I mean, mum and dad went away on holiday, so he was staying with us. He's got to write a book, this bloke. Um, You've um, got to write a book, Carl. Go on. I came back, yeah. and there was women everywhere. There's women in every bed in the house. I thought, where am I going to sleep? Have you set up a brothel? What? So, no, it's just a bit of a, bit of a one. <laughs> That's so, impressive, though, a girl in every single bed. Uh, I mean... He was mad. So, um, I slept on the sofa downstairs, mm. and I didn't sleep that well. Yeah. But I slept on it before when it was facing a different way. Sure. And I had a good sleep. <laughs> so for you, so that's proved the worth of Feng Shui. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's something in it. <laughs> Did you honestly think there's something in it, though? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, we'll just read a few of the others, Rick. Okay, well, let's yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not be, I think, I think most people know this one. Uh, display the three-legged frog for luck. Um, look for a three-legged frog. You can buy one from any Chinese supermarket <laughs> uh, and place it in the vicinity of your front door, facing inwards as if it has just come into the house. Don't place the frog facing the door! <laughs> Please! Oh, come on, people! What Think you... before you place your frog. I mean, this, this really is... I mean, but, but... What's the last page? Because that will be the most important one, won't Do you reckon? Yep. The last one, I... I, I... Uh, the wealth vase. Make a wealth vase and keep it hidden in your cupboard. It can be made of gold, crystal, or glass. If, uh, can I just say something? If you've got a vase made of gold, you're probably all right for money anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure, sure. But this yeah. is the wealth vase. How do make the wealth vase? Fill it with semi-precious stones and with soil taken from a rich man's garden. So just find the soil of a rich man. <laughs> Take some soil from the <laughs> This is like bury a piece of steak and the wart will go. Yes. I, I, I have a uh, tooth of frog. This is... It's the one where with the gods. Can you find that one? Oh, where's that one? Yeah. Do you, do you, what, do you, what do you make of Feng Shui, Carl? I is it something you believe in? Uh, well, like I said, I didn't sleep well on the sofa when it was... So for you, that's proof, proof so positive. Yeah, you've got to get it right, haven't you? <laughs> um, I'd like Carl to read this out. Okay. Yeah, do you, do you mind? Read it out, just read it out loud. Which, Which one? one? Yeah, the, the gods are here, right, right, okay. Just read that, that's such a, a good bit the gods yeah. of wealth into your home. Yeah. The Chinese have several gods of wealth. Yeah. Which they display in their homes to attract, what? Prosperity. Prosperity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My personal favourite is C.C.S.G. Yi. Yeah. Who sits on a tiger. He sits on a tiger? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait. It's pretty difficult to find this, this fella. Yeah. If you could use Kang Kung or the three star gods, oh, no. Read him out! Read out the names of the star gods. F U K. It's a Chinese god. god. You're allowed Chinese to say god. Chinese god no. on the radio. No. You are allowed to say. What you to say? You say it then. Well, it, it, you look. It's, you're so immature. Read the three of the moment. Okay. Um, 
If he is difficult to find, you should use Quan or the three star gods, Fuck Luck and Sal, all of whom bring wealth and prosperity. Well, what are the names of the gods again? Because I just, I'm, if I'm well, making it, a note at home, well, it's, it's just, it's a Chinese god. Yeah, it's this Quan Kun, or you can use Luck Sal. <coughs> He can't. What? But it's a god. F U K. It's how it's Yeah, I assume. I don't know if we're, if we're pronouncing it wrong. I'm really apologise. Apologies, apologies if, if we're offending anyone who's uh, of an oriental persuasion. But that's Quan Kung or Luke Sao or Fuck. And any of those gods are available at a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Near you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's Feng Shui. <laughs> it's an ancient art. You can't give me that look. Man. Clinic, walking with thee. Um, so there, that's uh, Feng Shui. That's we've, Feng Shui sorting. We've given away donuts. We've talked a little bit about um, band names today. We've a more insight into Carl's psyche. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you, you uh, in doing that record, you said, uh, "Are we knock everything?" Mm. You saw something about the Bermuda Triangle, didn't you? That yeah, when I talked about ghosts, you sort of just. Uh because you don't believe in it. Mm. You, I think it's because you're scared of it, to be honest, and you can't admit to, to understanding it and sure. actually believing in it. Sure. Thing on last night, Steve. Yes. The Mood of Triangle. Oh, yeah. Do you know much about that? Um, mainly the, uh, song yeah. by, what was his name? What's his name? The um, Bermuda Triangle, Triangle where the people no, disappear. No, Bermuda the Triangle. What's his name? No. no. Barry Manilow. Barry, Barry Manilow. Yeah. Are you familiar with the lyrics? Bermuda Triangle, where people disappear. Bermuda Triangle, don't go near. Yeah. I shouldn't really make a joke out of it. No, you're right. Go on. But, um, what it is, right, there's a programme saying what it what it's about. Do you, I mean, what do you know about it? Uh, as I say, mainly from what Barry's told me, but uh, certainly planes and various boats have gone missing within the Bermuda Triangle. Planes? Yeah. Yeah, but obviously that documentary didn't explore it. He, he, he learned a lot about that. For that. I, I learned a lot about American history through We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. Again, most so, of my knowledge of um, the uh, sort of you know, Tsarist Russia comes from uh, Rasputin, Rasputin right? by um, yeah. Boney M. Well, listen, yeah. He was the lover of the Russian Queen. They put you know, poison into his wine. Yeah, yeah. They shot him till he was dead. Yeah. Which is, you know, go on. Right, well, this, oh, those right? Russians. Sort of a uh, bit, bit of an earthquake in the sea. Sure. Let's out methane gas. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, if methane gas, if you were swimming out in the sea, yeah. and there was like a, an earthquake and some methane came out, yes. you can't swim in it, you just sink. Okay. Even if you're a good swimmer. What, what, what happens if you're, you're two lads from your school? And they were heads. Yeah, that, that, that's that's a that's like a buoy. Doesn't so you can see them a mile off, no, no, and no. their webbed hands would get them into shore. Because they did actually say, even if you're wearing a life jacket, if, if the water's full of methane, right? You, you just sink. sink. You just sink. So what he's saying is, boats have gone across the sea, mm. got a load of methane in the sea, and the boat just sinks. Right. What about the planes? Is it then sort of planes with little sort of floaty things Could on? Could be. That'll <laughs> start out with the sort they've landed in the sea. Right. And <laughs> methane's coming. Well, sorry Carl, what did the documentary say? Not, not I imagine. Yeah, your hypothesis might be working. Yeah, what well, did they, they sound like? They didn't cover they? that bit, they didn't, didn't cover the planes. planes. They didn't do the planes. Something else they said about it though. Go on. Loch Ness, mm -hmm. the monster. Yep, sure. Probably doesn't exist. Okay. What oh. it is? Interesting. Hold on. Interesting. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yes. Uh, what they thought it d not this probably didn't exist. Curious viewpoint. Hold on. What, uh, what proof have they got for that, Carl? How can they go around saying stupid things like that? It's methane. Right. Again, in Loch Ness. And people have seen. Um, what's the what's the lake? It's in Loch Ness. Loch Ness. Yeah. Um, it being things. the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Yeah. That's so where it lives. That's how it finds its way home. That's certainly the, the clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, Carl, yeah. that's the clue. Yeah, if you go. And, it's, uh, and if it's out uh, uh, wondering, it goes, excuse me, uh, would you know where uh, I'm being the Loch Ness monster? Where, where would I be going? <laughs> oh, you'd be going to the Loch Ness if that's your home. It's a way over there, you so big anyway, monster, you. So the bubbles from the sure. methane mm. bubble up out of the water. Yeah. And people yeah. think, oh, God, it's a monster's head. But it's not, it's just water sort of shooting up because of the bubbles. Well, that's two of the great mysteries of the universe solved by mm -hmm. Carl P on a, on a Saturday afternoon. That is right. fantastic. Yeah. So, that makes me, that makes me think a lot of things. So, you know when mediums are sort of like going, oh, I've got something coming through. Mm. Do you think they are uh, exhaling a lot of methane gas? And thus, thus making them not think straight. Do you think everything's down to methane gas? Do you think that all the mysteries of the universe are down to methane gas, Carl? What did it say in the documentary you saw? About what? What was the budgie happy? We know that budgie was sad. Was it? Was it in a room? Because they used to take canaries down the mines, didn't they? They used to take canaries down the mines. They'd smell the methane, 
and then the budgie would be happy. I'm not gonna teach you anymore. Play a record. The long oh, and she, winding road. She'll introduce this, shouldn't I? Go on, eh? Oh, it's Wait. Beatles, Long and Winding Road. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Are we getting paid for this? And winding road. Freaks Electric, Richard X and the Sugar Bane mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly through, we've had a few laughs again, a yep. few tears. Absolutely, as always. Few, uh, oh, oh, excuse me, and don't, don't be alarmed, I, I look quite frightening, but uh, merely a, a nice monster. I seem to have lost my way home. Uh, could you direct me in the right direction? Ah, nice to meet you, yeah, Carpio. Hi. Um, what's your name? W why do you need to know my name? Well, it might help me to find out where you come from. Oh, my name's the Loch Ness Monster. Okay, alright, give me a second. Um, what was your name again? Loch Ness Monster. See, this is what I mean. <laughs> when you came in, you're all over me. <laughs> like a rash. Being nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> Gets towards the end. You get nasty. It's the phone. Answer it. See who it is. Can you give us a second, uh, listeners? Just amuse yourselves for a moment. Yeah. We're who just is speaking it? to, uh, Carl's just on the phone there, speaking to someone. Um, We'll just, uh, keep you abreast of who that is, uh, kind of it? time. It's, uh, it's ten to three. Uh, wants to know if you're doing a live show somewhere tonight. So, just a private call now, uh, um, asking Ricky... Uh, I am, yeah. Later. But I, Ricky, but I don't want to say it now. I, I, uh, well, I, well, uh, I've got in mind one person now. I've got to get out of And, uh, often performs live <laughs> at, uh, different <laughs> venues <laughs> around yeah. the country. Um, uh, okay. so while those two take care of business... <laughs> All right, guys, have you finished that private call? Yes. Nice. Jeez, that was outrageous. Um, you know you're a fan of Feng Shui, Carl, and you believe it's all true. <laughs> um, I just, I did just run this one past you just on the off chance. Yeah, Because yeah. you know, maybe that you change your opinion slightly. Yeah. Feng Shui teaches you to use your environment wisely. Sure. If your land and the surrounding area is undulating, it's said to house auspicious dragons. <laughs> when land is flat and featureless, the dragon is missing and the land is said to be less auspicious. Excuse me, they call me the, uh, uh Brixton Dragon. Sure, sure. Uh, I seem to have lost my way. I, I know it's South London somewhere, but, uh, uh could you help me find my home? What's, it, what, 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 what's your name? Well, they call me the Brixton Dragon. Uh, right, where are you from? Uh oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> oh, I yeah. see what you mean, I. Oh, the came out. So is that, does that, does that make you query it at all, the dragon? I'm not into it that much. Right, I'm sure. I'm just saying that if you have your head at one end of the bed rather than the other, it might make a difference to your night's yeah. sleep. It's not so much yeah. feng shui though, is it, as sort of good advice, hmm. generally. When you went home- don't, don't, don't sleep on the end of a spike near a cliff. Good advice. I mean, that, that's good advice, isn't it? You mm. know what I mean? No. When you went home and uh, the house was full of women, <laughs> Why did you, why did you sleep on the sofa? Why did you not pop upstairs and sort of... Into a warm bed. Yeah, with a, with a, with a woman. <laughs> 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 were, were they dressed or... Is your brother still sort of have those kind of parties or... I haven't seen him for years. Sure, sure, sure. Where's really? he living there? I don't know. Okay. What's his name? Mark. <laughs> it's not, he's not, he's not known as like Moss Side Mark. Cause that could or, be a clue. Ten <laughs> Dawlish Road Mark. He's never out of prison long enough to get a nickname. Hey, really? steady on, it's getting a bit heavy, isn't it? Oh, God. What? Is this, is this what's motivated a lot of your anxiety? Yeah. Oh, the hair loss, that sort of thing. We always go a little bit too far, don't we? They're a bit dark at the end of the show. I know. Well, it's, um... Oh. Well, do sorry about that. them for Pete. Oh, Pete wanting a little bit of Muse. Yeah, if Pete wants it. I mean, I don't, I'm not a big fan. I don't mind Muse. I, I, I've still not got over them them doing that, um, summertime song. What was it called? Nina Simone cover, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, listen, let's not bring the show down. No. Uh,